for one last time in the regular season. Welcome back to the Brick Lane pregame show. Josh Sperber and Ozzy Mike here as the Aces have a big, big makeup game against your long Korea today. They need to win all five of their remaining games, including four in Perth, where they will travel on Friday. But a continuation of the first round of the season, which was a really sor solid start to the year for the Aces. The Aces looked really good against this Geelong Korea team in round one after losing the series opener, getting shut out in the first game of the season. Came right back, a resilient come from behind win in 13 innings. That was the Matt O'Neill walk-off Grand Slam game in game two. Took uh, game three as well. Then, of course, the rain out. So finally making that game up. Look, I mean, this is an Aces team that's playing as good of baseball as they have all season right now. Uh, it starts with one win over these next five. And um, I think the, vi the good vibes are going to continue. And, um, you know, they'll be ready to go tonight. And this current win streak started with a walk-off win as part of just a spectacular finish to the series against the Adelaide Giants, the current leaders of the Southwest Division. They've already got their spot in the playoffs. The Aces, again, need to keep that streak going to secure their spot. But, I mean, what can't you say about how strong these last three games have been for Melbourne? Oh, the Aces took care of business. They, they picked the, the best time of year to be playing their best baseball. I mean, everything from the starting pitching, the bullpen, uh, up and down the line of one through nine, guys coming off the bench and contributing. Everything clicked. Uh, and to be able to get three straight wins against uh, one of the best teams in the league this season, I mean, that's not easy to do. Um, and we talked about it on the broadcast uh, in the Adelaide series after after game four. I mean, the crowd played a big factor in, you know, just keeping the, the good vibes up. I mean, the atmosphere was electric. And uh, the Aces just looking to, um, you know, pick up right where they left off two days ago and get another W. A record series in terms of crowd and a big series for the Aces. Pitching did play a huge factor, and one of those pitchers, Scott Harkin, going again tonight, he had his first start for Melbourne in the first one of the series, and he looked lights out. Oh, the Sharks been great in his two outings. Seven shutout innings for Scott, uh, and to, to be able to go out there and make his first start in Melbourne, about a week after getting off a plane, coming over to join the team late in the season. Five shutout innings, five strikeouts, and he kept guys off base. He limited the hits, he didn't walk guys, and that was huge. It really set the tone for the rest of the game. And another tone setter in the Aces pitching staff has been Dan McGraw. Started the season as a starter against Geelong. He pitched a complete game. The only runs he let up were a ninth inning, three run home run by Song Chan Oi. But he came back to the bullpen after getting injured in the Brisbane series. Five relief outings from Melbourne this season, and the Aces won in all five of those games. Yeah, I mean, it's no coincidence that uh, the games that he's pitched in have resulted in Ws for the Aces. He's been able to, to lock uh, one and two run leads down in the ninth. He's been able to pitch in big spots with the game tied and, uh, you know, Got a, got, a, got a couple wins recently, uh, but it's not easy to, to go from a starting role and then go back to the bullpen, especially with an injury mixed in between. But McGraw has been money. I'm calling him Money McGraw, uh, and he's just such a big piece at the back end of Peter Moylan's bullpen right now. And as you said, another guy who was just getting hot at the right time for the Melbourne Aces, and we talked about Scott Harkin. This is the first time that Geelong will see him at all this series. They have, He's the only pitcher on the Aces staff that they haven't come to bat up against how big is that for Melbourne I, I think it, I think it's a little bit of an advantage look it's not going to dictate the game uh, it's not going to necessarily be the difference in the game but I think it's good because you, you have a, a new arm out there that these guys haven't seen so the first time through the lineup especially uh, there's going to be some different looks these these GK hitters aren't necessarily going to know what's coming and that's good I don't know what this their their scattering report is but um, I think it definitely bodes well for the aces and for the aces plenty of diff difference makers in that last series couple of big hits by Jared Dale. Who do you like in terms of a breakout player for the Aces to kind of control the tempo of this game? Uh, bre see, breakout's tough because there's a lot of guys who are really hitting their stride late in the season. Um, you know, I'm usually the one putting you on the spot with this. That's uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I actually am going to point to Jared Dale on this one. I'm going to go with him as the standout star in this game just because of um, how hot a bat he has right now, whether he's at the top of the lineup or in more of an RBI position towards the middle bottom of the lineup. Uh, he's just squaring a lot of balls up right now, it, whether it's to the pool side, staying up the middle, going to uh, right field the opposite way. Um, I'm picking Jared as my standout star just because of how locked in he is at the plate. Dale's batting six tonight. Aces going for their fourth straight win in another must-win game. A playoff atmosphere here at Melbourne Ballpark. You're not going to want to go away. Stay tuned here on Aces TV for the Aces against Geelong Korea.
It's a hot one at Melbourne Ballpark tonight, but the playoff race is heating up in the ABL, so it makes perfect sense. Hi, everyone, and welcome inside our broadcast for tonight's game between the Melbourne Aces and Geelong, Korea. A makeup game from round one back in mid-November, but these two teams finally getting to play the series finale from round one. Aussie Mike and Josh Sperber with you in the booth. Well, Josh, it's as simple as this. If the Aces win each of their final five games, they get in the playoffs. If they lose any of their remaining five, they don't. And that's what it comes down to. Yeah, it sounds a lot easier than, than it actually is, but the Aces certainly got on that train to start, or really to end that Adelaide series. Three straight wins over this past weekend, and all of them just seem to get more and more exciting. Within one game and each of the, within one run in each of those three wins, and two walk-offs, including a walk-off walk on Sunday. Well, the Aces come in at 15 and 20. Meanwhile, Geelong, Korea is 13 and 22. Before we go to the break for the anthems, let's get in our Vibrant Services weather report. Well, it, just, it could just say really darn hot. That that really could describe it. 30 degrees Celsius. The wind hopefully will blow a bit more into the booth, but we see it a little bit moving the flags around in the outfield. A small chance of rain, so that's something to keep an eye on. All right, we'll get you the starting lineups and the keys to the game after a break for both the Korean and Australian national anthems. So we will pause for those anthems right now, but keep it locked on Aces TV. Big game tonight at Melbourne Ballpark as the Aces look to win the first of five. They need five wins in a row to get in the playoffs. An uphill battle for this Aces team, Josh, but I think they've got the mindset and the roster to do it. Absolutely. I mean, it just it's kind of been like the Aces all season. They, they really have not been worried, even when it was in those couple of games where they haven't lost like a long losing streak. It just has not seemed to affect this team. They know what they came here to Melbourne to do, and that's make the playoffs. And they, you just can't count these guys out. So let's get into the Aces starting lineup for tonight's game. We'll see what Peter Moylan is rolling out there tonight in a huge game for this team to try to keep their playoff hopes alive. Well, in the leadoff spot, it's the left fielder, Chris Burke, one of the hottest hitters in the league. He's on a five-game hit streak, drove in the game-tying run in the eighth inning 
on Sunday. Batting second, it's the shortstop, Robbie Glendinning. He's been fantastic this season. He leads the team in both slugging percentage and OPS. The three-hole hitter, it's the designated hitter, Jake Skull, celebrating his birthday today, hoping to get a W on his birthday. In the cleanup spot, it's the first baseman, Daryl George, one of the all-time greats in Melbourne as he looks to bring some thump in the middle of the order. Batting fifth, it's the catcher, Ryan LaVarnway, who has brought such a big bat and a veteran presence to this Aces team. Batting sixth, it's the third baseman and may be the arguably hottest hitter in the ABL right now. He's on a six-game hitting streak. He's hit safely in 11 of 12. Batting seventh, it's the right fielder, Jacob Robson. He's been such a steady presence in this lineup. Leads the team in on-base percentage. Batting eighth, the center fielder, Aaron Whitefield, a two-time Helms Award winner and one-time Defensive Player of the Year award. He's a, a big piece in the bottom of the order. And batting ninth, it's the second baseman, George Khalil, who has seven hits over his last five games. He's been really good lately. And on the mound, it's Scott the Shark Harkin making his second start and third appearance overall for the Aces. No earned runs in seven innings this season, Josh. He has been fantastic, and he will get Soho Chal, Kwon, Kwong Min, and Park Ju Hung, the top three in this GK order. Scott's first pitch of the night is a fastball that misses inside. It's 1-0. And we could see an advantage, something that we'll talk when we get into the keys to the game, just because Geelong hasn't seen him pitch yet. They've. They, this is now the 12th game against this Aces squad. Deep fly ball to left field. Well, you can forget about that one. Hey. Two pitches into the game, and Geelong Korea is on the board. Saho Chow picks on a hanging breaking ball, and it's one nothing. so not an ideal time to do it, but Josh, let's get into the keys to tonight's matchup. Well, we could write a new one just not to do that. Hung that breaking ball there, but the Aces have played from behind in just about every one of these games and they can still keep the momentum going and that's something they need to do just keep on winning because frankly that's all that they have that's all they can do harkin hung that breaking ball for soho chow but that kind of element of surprise the fact that they haven't really seen him before is quite important as well and yeah i mean it's just it's just a matter of winning the the bullpens have been a big key in all of these games there were so few games that just with a starter as the pitcher of record, and who I think whoever wins the battle of the bullpens could win this one. A tough start for the Aces, but if, if you remember from Sunday's game, Jack Fox gave up a leadoff home run to Nick Ward in the top of the first. The Aces came back to win that game by a run, scored a run in the eighth to tie it, and one more in the ninth to win it. So, I mean, hey, maybe that theme holds out today, leadoff batter homers. We'll see if Harkin can settle down after that. So that's the first run Harkin has allowed in an Aces uniform since joining the team in round eight in Sydney. Hard hit liner to right. That's down in front of Robson, a base hit. And Scott is pitching on short rest today, just three days rest. And it's rare that we see somebody go on short rest in the ABL, Josh, because normally games are Thursday through Sunday, three off days in the middle of the week. But this is uncharted territory with a makeup game on a Tuesday here. Yeah, and I think... I think it's because, I think the rest was a bit shorter because Moylan wanted to give Geelong a guy they haven't seen before, a guy they can't really do as much preparation for, particularly on this short week. And I, I like the idea. How long he stays in the game, though, is really just going to be up in the air. Maybe they'll use this as a bullpen game to save their starters for an all-important series against Perth, assuming they can get the win against Geelong. Quan takes off. Here's a throw from Lavardway. It's a good one. Tag on the head of the runner Quan, but in and out of Khalil's glove. He might have been safe anyway. Bang, that's bang, a, play. That certainly would have been a close call, a really good jump there by Quan Kwong Ming. We'll see, we'll see it here. Yeah, if he hadn't dropped the ball, he's out. See if that comes back to hurt the Aces. Man on second, no outs. Park Ju Hung at the dish. Park has been a mainstay in this GK lineup all season. Swing and a miss. Good fastball from the Shark there. Well, the Aces have played a ton of tight games this season. 17 of the Aces games this year have been decided by two runs or less. They're 9-8 and eight in those games. To have a winning record in, in such close games, Josh, especially when a team plays so many, that's pretty remarkable, especially with as trying of a season it's been for the Aces. The ball gets away from the Varnway, and... Quan moves up 90 feet, so he's at third now with no outs. Tough start in this inning for Harkin and the Aces, but going back to that, that close game, 
17 games decided by two runs or less, you said. The Aces have played 35. That's Tough. about, that's a little less than half. I mean, to have a winning record in that many close games is, is remarkable. There, there, there's really no other way to say it. I mean. Man on third, no outs. The Aces keep the infielders back. You gotta believe that the Aces know they'll need more than one. They'll definitely need more than two to score to, to win this game. So bringing the infield in to cut the runoff doesn't make a ton of sense. Great spot. You know, they'd rather not let an infield dribbler that just squeaks through the, the drawn in infield you know, change the entire inning. It looks like the plan is to trade a run for an out. 3-2 from Harkin, swing and a miss. Good curveball from Scott. That's a big out number one. And yeah, getting that curve working is going to be crucial for Harkin. The last time he pitched, that he, got, he had five strikeouts. I think four of them were on his curveball. I mean, he was really dominating with that pitch, a really sharp 12-6 drop. And if he can get that working to get the aces out of this jam, that would be crucial. Here's Song Chan Oi. He homered in all three of the games these two teams played at Melbourne Ballpark in round one. Harkin goes to curveball to get him over. 0 and 1. Harkin went five shutout innings and took a no decision in his first start on January 13th. That was this past Friday against Adelaide. Aces won that game in walk off fashion. Harkin threw 74 pitches. He struck out five, walked just one. And he gave up only two hits. In terms of starters who have gone at least four innings in a game this season, go, that's Scotty. the fewest hits that an Aces starter has given up in a game this year. Another hey, breaking right. ball. LaVarnway smothers it. Well, it always helps to have a former big leaguer behind the dish to help you get through a game. Defensively for the Aces, Ryan LaVarnway doing the catching. Jared Dale's at third base. Robbie Glendinning at short. George Khalil's the second baseman. Daryl George over at first. In the outfield left to right, it's... Chris Burke, Aaron Whitefield, and Jacob Robson. Another curveball from Harkin, but that one misses. That looked close, but he's certainly not trying to give anything over the plate to Song Chan Oi. He has been nothing else but dominant against Melbourne this year. Softly hit ground ball to short. Glenn Dinning goes to first. Throws offline, but look at the tag from Daryl George. He got him. The Aces trade the run for the out. 2-0 Geelong, Korea, but two outs and bases empty here in the first. Got to give a lot of credit to Gerald George on that play because obviously you never want to get the you never wanted to get the run in in a perfect situation. You want to keep the the other the opponent scoreless, but in a situation like that where you know it's going to be an out for a run trade, you want to make sure to get the out. Great job by by George at first to stay with that throw. Harkin looks for the inning ender here to limit it to just two runs. The Aces got Harkin five runs of support on Friday night, so these two early runs, not anything really to be worried about. I mean, this is this is nothing new for the Aces. It might not it might be in the, not be in the first inning, but they're certainly used to getting scored on first. Well, look at Aaron Whitefield track down that ball in the gap. A nice play there from the two-time Helms Award winner. Two runs on two hits, no errors, none left for Geelong in the first. Aces have some work to do down 2 nothing early. We'll head to the bottom of the first after this on Aces TV. At the Sporting Vibe, we're a little different to other pubs and bars. We have more than just cooks, we have chefs. We have more than bar service, we have table service. We have more than specials, we have specialty. We have more than live sporting events, we have atmosphere. And we have more than customers, we have fans. It's more than a sports bar, it's a sporting globe. meals from light and easy's new spring menu and enjoy amazing food more free time and a healthier life 
No shopping or cooking and no contracts or subscriptions. Just your choice of affordable, delicious meals delivered to your door. Order today. Create the perfect look for your home with Ublines once a year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all Ublines products are half price. Yes, half price. Ublines Australia, more value for you. Head to ublines.com.au. Chris Burke leads off the bottom of the first for the Aces. It's Burke, Robbie Glendinning, and Jake Skoll, the top three in Peter Moylan's order. Final home game of the regular season at Melbourne Ballpark, but the Aces, if they win their final five games of the regular season, there's a chance that there will be more baseball here in this ballpark. But got to take care of business over the next five, and it starts tonight. The Aces down 2 nothing after the top of the first. Geelong Korea got two off Scott Harkin. Here's a tapper to the left side. No chance at all for Saw, the shortstop. It's an infield hit for Chris Burke. He's now hit safely in six straight. Chopped that one off the plate, and I don't know that I've ever seen an infield grounder bounce that high. Definitely not, and something that we talked about with Ed on the broadcast yesterday or on Sunday was things like this. Just the little kind of freak things, the little strokes of luck that just kind of have to go a team's way when they're getting win streaks started, when they're in these kind of do-or-die situations, and that's one of them. The Aces have been on the right side of a lot of those situations lately as the side-arming right-hander So Jun Wan gets one over to Glenn Dinning. It's 0-1. So 22 years old from South Korea. 1-3 with a 547 ERA this season. Aces have the leadoff man on, something they did quite a bit in the series finale against Adelaide, which resulted in a walk-off win for the Aces, 4-3 in nine innings. Two walk-off wins against Adelaide. The Aces won the final three games of that series. Looking to make it four wins in a row for the first time this season. And a big part of that was with Chris Burke at the leadoff spot. We, we said it in the, in the pregame show. He has just gone an absolute tear. Five games now, six with a hit streak, seven game on base streak. He is absolutely getting hot at the right time. He's hot at the right time. A lot of other aces are, and this team is overall. Five and three in their last eight are the aces. Big turnaround from earlier in the season. Ever since the aces lost three of four in round seven against Canberra in this ballpark, they've played winning baseball. Split in Sydney to three of four from Adelaide. One-two to Robbie. Ripped down the right field line, hooking towards the corner. Foul. A hot shot off the bat of Glenn Dinning. See if he can straighten it out here with two strikes. And he's a guy that you really want to get hot. He had a solid series against Adelaide last week. But he's a guy who you're just not used to seeing hit under 300, which is just so incredible that he's done that in his previous six years. Getting him a couple more hits in this series and then in the purse series could, could be the thing that puts the, puts the aces over the edge. Big hole on the right side with the second baseman Kim pinching towards second for the double play. Move to first, a close one. Burke back safe. Umpires in tonight's ballgame. Stuart Howe calling balls and strikes. Ian Gavin, the first base umpire. Jeff Dunn, the third base umpire. Right hander so set the pitch. Glendinning rips another one foul. Defensively for Geelong Korea, Cho is the catcher. In the infield, Kim at third, Saw at short, Kim at second, and Song at first. In the outfield, Owen left, Lee in center, and Park in right. Ace is three and four against Geelong Korea this season. That's a makeup game from round one, the completion of round one, finally. One, two, Glenn Dinning sends one into center. That's down in front of Lee. The Aces have their first two on in the first. First and second for the three-hole hitter and the birthday boy, Jake Skoll. I think a home run would be a really fitting birthday. <laughs> Go ahead, homer, the top of the yeah. first in a must-win game. How about it? And that's better than blowing out candles to me. I don't know about you. But. Anyways, though, good job by Glenn Dinning. You saw him have a couple of close misses uh, at the plate, you know, hit the ball really hard the other way they went foul getting one to drop in a fair territory is big aces the first two hitters on when at a time they need it most so here's skull looking to do some damage 
A hard slider over for a strike 0 and 1. The Aces are 10 and 9 at home this season. They fought to get themselves over 500 at home with the three wins against Adelaide. Tough road record at 5 and 11. But a win tonight would mean they've got some work to do on the road. That series against Perth would mean a ton. The Aces go to Perth to play four this coming Friday through Sunday. Friday night, doubleheader Saturday, then the Sunday afternoon regular season finale. If the Aces win this game, that series will decide who the second team is from the Southwest Division going to the playoffs. Skull rips one foul down the line. It's one and two. I do like the aggression from the Aces. You're seeing a lot of swings on those close pitches. They're seeing the ball really well out of Sojun Wan's hand, and they're getting the bat on it pretty consistently. And this is the power portion of that lineup. Enough of those balls hit the bat, and it could be trouble. The good kind. Ninth game of the season for So. It's his fourth start. 24 and two-thirds innings of work coming in. 23 Ks, just six walks. 1-2, that's outside. The Aces have seen so this season. He pitched twice in round six at Geelong. He pitched in the series opener and the series finale. Picked up a save in that series. That's his only save of the season. 2-2 two two on Skull, swing and a miss. He's down on strikes. That's out number one in the first. And looks like in his at-bat... It seems like any time he swings, he's still within the vicinity of getting hit. That one, he just seems a bit over the top of it. But his timing just always seems so good. You're right. I mean, I don't think we, we really ever can say that Jake Skull takes a bad swing. You know, the swing always looks pretty. Just missed it a little bit there. The one out and runners stay where they are. Here's Daryl George. Longest tenured Aces position player. He's played the most games in franchise history. Well, he's played in a lot of big games, Josh. This just adds to it. And, I mean, it's something Ed was saying on Sunday. He just always seems to be the guy in a big spot for Melbourne. And I know it's early in this game, but every inning, every pitch is just that much bigger because there is no margin for error anymore. The atmosphere over the weekend was incredible. You know, all must-win games for the Aces. They took three of four. And the Sunday game, the come-from-behind win, I mean, my heart was beating with every pitch. I mean, it was intense. Some of the most intense baseball I've been around. As intense as it can get yeah. for a Sunday afternoon game, you know what I mean? You know, Sunday afternoon games usually have that the chill vibe, the you know, more relaxed atmosphere, but not not this past Sunday, not two days ago. No, and that's that's what the Aces need. I think that's really what they thrive on. They know they know that every game you need a win. They they know what they know what's in front of them, and you can just tell just being in, being around the ballpark, in warm ups, just walking around the clubhouse, whatever, what have you. You can just tell that there is. You, you can just feel that. You can feel the extra heat that that this playoff atmosphere brings. They know that their backs are against the wall, and they're playing. Talk about playoff atmosphere all around the ABL. There's some big games over the next week. Only Geelong, Korea, and the Sydney Blue Sox have been eliminated from playoff contention. The Brisbane Bandits and Adelaide Giants, the two teams that have clinched a playoff spot already, so one spot up for grabs in each division. Auckland and Canberra fighting for that spot in the Northeast Division. The Aces and Heat going after that final spot in the Southwest Division. George sends one in the air. Right field. Park is there, makes the grab. Both runners bluff a tag, throw back to second, and Burke made it back. That is a very smart throw from Park Ju Hong. I, I really thought Burke was, was going to third. That seemed like it was deep enough in right field. But I get that you don't want to risk it. George just a little late, though, on that throw. And a really, really strong throw by Park Juhon. So with two down and runners still at first and second, here's Ryan LaVardway, the catcher. Josh, I just alluded to how close some of these matchups are. 
the standing-wise in the ABL. Auckland has a one-game lead over Canberra for the second spot in the Northeast Division. Adelaide, they've already clinched a playoff spot, but they only have a one-game lead over Perth for the division crown. So they still have a lot to play for. The Heat, it's wild. The Heat, over the, these next five days, can find themselves as division champs or they can find themselves out of the playoffs altogether. You know, the Aces run the table and win, win out. They're out. Yeah, I mean, it starts with this game, but you got to think Adelaide's got just as close eye as the on the Aces here at Heat Series next week as they do their own. The Barley takes outside. It's one and one. And I think LaVarnway, he could be, he should just be very content even with a walk because Jared Dale's in the on-deck circle and he has been amazing at the plate for the Aces. But I don't think that's, I don't think that's what LaVarnway wants. He has just, he's just been on a mission since he's come here. You can tell. So Dale is the man waiting on deck. LaVarnway swinging a good bat as well. Ace is looking for some runs, down 2-0 early. Scott Harkin gave up two in the top of the first, but did a good job to limit the damage. Burke at second, Glendinning at first. Lavarnway takes another one outside, it's 3-1. and one. Well, the last time So was on the mound, he gave up seven runs against the Auckland Tuatara. That was back on this past, this past Thursday. So he's looking for a better outing. The ace is looking to hang another crooked number on him. Wind picking up here at the ballpark. A huge gust of wind here as Lavarnway swings and pops one up right side. See who wants it, and it's Song who makes the grab fighting that wind gust. The aces get their first two on in the bottom of the first, but they fail to score. No runs on two hits, no errors. Two men left on after an inning of play. The Aces trail Geelong Korea 2 to nothing. Top two after this quick break on Aces TV. One Love is there for the moments with the people you love the most. To share the highs and the lows together. It's the one for all people, all times and all places. Brick Lane's One Love Pale Ale, it's the one for all. Top of the second inning from Melbourne Ballpark. Well, things have changed pretty quickly. Not only the score, but the weather. Geelong Korea got two runs in the top of the first. Saho Chow a leadoff homer on the second pitch of the game. Song Chan Oi an RBI ground out a couple batters later. And what was once a really hot, humid, sunny day has turned into, to be honest, I don't even know really what to call this, Josh. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a storm is coming. But I think that bodes well for the Aces because the last time rain affected a game against Geelong, it ended pretty well for Melbourne. Well, the home plate umpire, Stuart Howe, calls for time as another wind gust comes through. It looks ugly out there. It really does. Yeah. No rain quite yet, at least I don't think. Just a lot of wind. It's been blowing straight out to right, really, since that the first couple pitches of the game. That was a big reason that Soho Chow kind of caught the wind on the home run. was a hard-hit ball, but... 
you can tell the wind is going to be a big factor on where the baseball flies today. Lee Jin Young, the center fielder, the leadoff man here in the second. We're going to miss there. Good pitch from Parkin, two and two. Kim Ju Sung and Cho Hyung Woo to follow. One from Harkin, swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back fastballs up in the zone from Scott. And he's got another strikeout, giving two in the game. Settling in a little bit. You never like the pitcher to give up runs early, but you do like this, responding to those runs by just getting easy out. And he's, he's looking a lot more comfortable up there now. One out, no one on. Here's Kim Ju Sung. Harkin working quickly, just pumping that fastball. Is the second Kim Ju Sung. Each team with two hits apiece. The Aces had Burke and Glenn Dinning on on back-to-back -back singles to start the bottom of the first, but the next three batters made out. And both those runners stayed where they were and couldn't get them past first and second. Upstairs from Harkin, as that backs Kim off the plate. Well, I wonder if Harkin's working a lot quicker because of the recent change in weather here. Obviously. Both teams really want to get this game in. The Aces need to get this game in. It means so much. I just don't think Harkin wants to get wants to get taken out of the game because if weather changes this game, you don't. It, it, it'll be hard to to keep him back in the game. It's so rare to see uh, after a weather delay. Hopefully, we will get there, but it's rare to see after a weather delay the starting pitcher staying in the ball game if it happens at that early stage. Two, two, that's upstairs. Yeah, especially if it's a lengthy delay, there's pretty much no shot the starter comes back. Now you figure, I'd say like 30 minutes on the high side or less, it gives the starter a chance to come back out. Because I guess you could look at, even if it's 30 minutes, you could look at it as, hey, the equivalent of you know your, your team at bat, a really long half inning. But anything more than that, Really tough for a guy to go back out there and lock back in with the same mentality. Things have calmed down right now weather-wise. Big gust of wind came through. Really dark out there now. The sun went away pretty quick. No rain as of yet. Breaking ball. Sent in the air, shallow right center. Sorry, uh, it's Mateo that's it's like Whitefield's like comfortable I'm there. The Makes the grab. Camps under it. S sorry, yeah, we just switched out. Two up, two down in the second. That's just a really good at bat from any angle you want to look at. Kim Ju Song was absolutely badly. Harkin just stayed patient. You know, kept throwing, kept throwing his pitches, didn't let the fact that Kim Ju Song was fouling just about everything off change his game plan on that. Here's the catcher, Cho Hyung Woo. He tried to check his swing there. Essentially in self-defense. Counts 0-1. Arkin continues to work quick, pumps the fastball in the outer half, it's 0-2. Good crowd on hand tonight on a Tuesday. Arkin's 0-2, sent to right, but Robson's there, makes the grab, and it's a quick 1-2-3 inning for Scott Harkin. The Aces with some work to do at the plate. They trail Geelong Korea 2 to nothing. We head to the bottom of the second after a quick break on Aces TV. For over 40 years, All Green Nursery has been providing the communities of Melbourne's western and northern suburbs the best advice and results for their gardens. Our retail centre, indoor plant space and expansive nursery floor showcases over 150 varieties of vibrant plants, most of them grown locally right here in Werribee South. We have qualified horticulturists on site to help assist with all your gardening needs and our home decor section is stocked with a full range of quality options. All Green Nursery, your local plant nursery and garden centre. Visit our sites in Hoppers Crossing and Epping.
All Star Access Hire are your access equipment specialists. We have an extensive range of state-of-the-art equipment and we pride ourselves on delivering outstanding customer service. We have the youngest fleet of equipment in Victoria and we are consistently adding new machines. We get to know our customers and form partnerships with them. This video is of our partnership with the Victorian Government at Reservoir Station. All Star Access Hire are proud sponsors of the Melbourne Aces and our All Star Bar. We play on here in Melbourne. Michael Mark Cantonini and Josh Berber with you on the call tonight as we take a look at the radar. Josh, what are you seeing there? You're the weatherman tonight. That's a bad look, but it um, doesn't seem like there's going to be too much heavy that's going to hit us. We might get some scattered showers, but I think the, the red and orange stuff are the things you really want to avoid, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of that. Jared Dale, Jacob Robson, and Aaron Whitefield, 6-7-8 due up for the Aces. Dale, the hottest hitter on the team. He's riding a six-game hitting streak. He's hit safely in 11 of his last 12 as well. 1-0. Dale rips one in the air. Left field. That one's deep. O goes back, and that one sails over the wall. Fire me up, Jared Dale. A leadoff homer here in the second, and the Aces cut the deficit in half. Jared Dale has now hit safely in seven straight games. It ties him for the Aces' longest hitting streak of the season. Well, we knew this team could play from behind. We knew there were runs to be scored. That's number one. And it seems like at the center of those run scoring is always Jared Dale. That's how it's been these last couple of games. Another guy who's peaking at the right time, and you love to see that from Dale. His, the power has not been there in terms of home run this season, and that is a darn good time for your first. Well, don't forget that, Josh, you put me on the spot in the pregame show for a standout star. I picked Jared Dale. It's a, it's a good pick so far. Yep. Here's Jacob Robson looking to keep it going. Robson leads the Aces in on base percentage. Seems like every time you turn around, he's on base. He scored the winning run in Sunday's series finale against Adelaide. Came in as a pinch runner after J.D. Osborne walked to open the frame. Takes inside there. The wind continues to howl out there. Really could use that to settle down a little bit. Robson asking for time, maybe because of the wind. Two to one, our score, bottom two. Jared Dale, a leadoff homer here in the second to get the Aces on the board. And Dale continues to swing a hot bat for this team. He's now hit safely in 12 of his last 13. That's pitch from Soda Robson. That misses. Good take there from Jacob. Well, for Dale, it's his second homer of the season. Give him six RBIs now. And it's his eighth extra base hit overall. So the count runs full on Robson after that swing and miss. See what he does here on the payoff. Robson looking to keep it going. No outs here in the frame. 3 2 from So fought off. That's something we've seen more and more of from Robson. Just fighting off pitches. He's always a guy who is going to swing himself into counts. His default mode is just attack, attack, attack. And those good defensive swings, we've seen a lot more of as the course of the season has gone on. 3-2 again, swing and a miss. Second strikeout for So, one out in the second. And that brings up Whitefield. Well, Aaron had a really hot start to the season. And while his numbers aren't where they usually are, he, he's found ways to be productive for this team. He's 11 for 11 in stolen base opportunities. Always seems to pick up an extra base on the bases. And a couple hits in the series against Adelaide, his former team. And it looks like he's got another one here. He dumps one into right for a base hit. Big turnaround first. He's headed for second. Here's the throw, and it's well in time. Whitefield thrown out for out number two. I like the aggression from Whitefield there, but you would have it would have been fine just staying with a single. He's a guy who could steal bases so easily, but you gotta give Park Chu Hong credit. Hat coming up. He stopped, he saved a double with the throw, with the route. 
and just just a really good job in right field to to stop what would have been a huge extra base hit. It was, per, I mean, if you're going to call anything a perfect throw, that was it. Yeah. Right on the money. And here's the nine-hole hitter George Khalil. So a single for Whitefield, thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. And to your point, he could have been on second on the next pitch, you know, with his wheels. But I'm with you. I like the aggressiveness. Try to get in scoring position out of the gates. Khalil takes a breaking ball. Ace is seeing it well out of So's hand. Four hits through eight batters. One-one to Khalil. He rips one foul. It's one and two. Seven hits for George over his last five. He went hitless in the series finale against Adelaide on Sunday. That snapped a four-game hitting streak. But he did reach base in that one. Worked a walk in the ninth inning, a big walk at the time, to put another man on base. An eventual walk-off win for the Aces. 1-2, sent in the air, right center. Hit well, but right at Lee, who falls down making the grab. Might have been battling the wind out there. And the inning is over. So one run on the leadoff home run from Jared Dale. Two hits, no errors. No one left on in the second through two full. It's Geelong Korea two, and the Aces one. A lot more baseball to be played. We'll go to the top of the third after this. Josh taking over on the play-by-play -play on Aces TV. Aussie gardeners are best served by Aussie tools, built specifically for our unique environment and conditions. Back in the 1890s, Leonard Chambers and William Thompson started a beekeeping supply business in Melbourne. Little would they know that their company would go on to change how Australians garden for well over a century. Cyclone is ingrained into our country's history and our way of life. Our tools are long-lasting and purpose-built for hard work. We've been making quality tools for over a century. They last that long, you can hand them down to the next generation. Good, quality, honest product that the Australian people have grown to love. It's not an Aussie shed without a cyclone. My biggest takeaway of being here for 34 years is just a sense of pride in the product. Australians buy good products. So if they keep on buying, we keep on making, so we'll be still, we'll be, we're here. Cyclone Tools, made for Australians. When enjoying a punt, easy does it with punt one, two, three. Punt123.bet is your home for all your punting needs with same race multis and same game multi options, including daily promotions on all the major sporting and racing events. It's punting made easy. Get in the game with Punt123. Visit Punt123.bet or download the app today. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue for you, call 1-800. First pitch of the third inning is fouled into left field by Kim So Jin. 9-1-2 and two coming up for GK against Scott Harkin and the Aces. Josh Sperber here on the play-by-play -play with Aussie Mike in the booth. 2-1. GK leads. A couple big solo home runs have made the difference here. And now it's a 1-1 one -one count to Geelong's third baseman. Harkin's retired six straight. One of them, though, did bring in a run as the breaking ball misses outside 2-1. Well, that Jared Dale home run was huge for the Aces. It brought life back into this stadium, and got to believe it just energized everybody in the dugout. Hottest hitter on the team right now, doing his thing, leading off the inning. And the Aces are not done scoring tonight, that's for sure. I honestly, if, if I had to predict a score line, I would say that this is just going to be a high-scoring ball game. Wind blowing. Uh, Dale picked a good time to get that one up in the air, especially... Um, out to left field, the way the ball travels out there. Yeah, it's been really the home run porch for the Melbourne Aces for every team at Melbourne Ballpark this year. I don't have the exact numbers, but I'd have to imagine a vast majority of the home runs hit here have gone out to left. Spike to fastball into the plate, Din Harkin, and now it's a full count to Kim So Jin. Game number 17 on the season for Kim. 220 average, just four RBIs. He won't get another one there as Harkin gets him down swinging. A strikeout in each of his last three innings. Three Ks for Harkin. 
And there's a nice first out here in the top of the third. Well, Scott's locking in right now. He's he's looked really good over the last inning plus after even really after giving up the home run. First pitch swinging again for GK. That's Soho Chal, who has every reason to be aggressive after he fouls that one into the All-Star bar. Got to be a lot more careful on this second pitch because on the second pitch of the game, Soho Chow took him deep. He won't swing at that one, and the count's one and one. Well, Scott looks like he's really settled in. He's working quickly. He's trusting his fastball. Most of his pitches tonight have been that fastball. That is not. That is a breaking ball that So swings and misses at, and it's one and two. It was his second homer and sixth RBI of the season. And that one led off the game. The wind intensifying here at Melbourne Ballpark as that takes the pitch low and outside, two and two. And we, we just saw two curveballs in a row there. I think now that he's really established that fastball as a pitch that, one, he can throw for strikes consistently to both sides of the plate. Turned on and fouled into the netting, still 2-2. Two, two. And two, one that he can get strikeouts on. I think now it's going to make that curveball that much more effective. Another packed house here at Melbourne Ballpark. Harkin looking to give the fans something to be excited about. 2-2. Two, two. Hit on the ground to first. That's going to leak through for a base hit. Third hit of the day for Geelong. Second off the bat of Soho Chow. Now that ball was hard hit, but I think it was more a result of the, the pitch coming in pretty hard and just turning it around. But you could clearly see there that he was late on that swing. And it just so happened he shot it through the hole between first and second. Yeah, just right where, right in the middle of the first and second bases. No, not much of a chance for two solid fielders in George Khalil and Daryl George. Can't really say George and George, but what can you do? So Quang Quang Min singled and scored in the first. Now as a runner on first. First base runner GK has had since the opening frame. Short lead off first base for So. Harkin deals. Fastball outside 2 0. And we're definitely going to keep an eye on those base runners when GK is on the mound because the home run aside, Geelong Korea thrives on small ball. They do that better than just about anyone. 2-0, fouled into the netting behind home plate, and now it's 2-1. Well, this GK team really wore out the aces in Geelong in round six. It wasn't just stealing bags, it was the bunts, even just showing bunt, even if they weren't going to drop a bunt down. Playing the mind games, too. 2-1, off goes the runner. Pitch misses for a ball on the money from LaVarnway, but it bounces right behind Robbie Glendinning. Looked like it was on target, but maybe just not enough on it. And it's three and one now to Kwong, Kwong Min. 42 steals now for this GK team on the season. That's second most in the ABL, but they've also been caught 20 times. So not a great percentage. Just over two thirds of the time they're successful. So if you're gonna be a base stealing team, you'd like the numbers to be a little better. I think a lot of those base stealing opportunities turn into hit and runs, though. And if you counted that, I'm sure it would be a bit higher than 42 as the fastball misses inside. And off go the batting gloves. Quan Quang Min is on with the one-out walk. That's not, that walk's not a, a huge deal right there. First base was open. Uh, the walks that really hurt are the ones where no, one are, well, no one's on base or it pushes one runner or multiple runners to another base but now it sets up the double play you got the force available at first second and third but definitely a tough spot with two dangerous hitters here in Park and Song yeah, the two best power hitters currently on the roster as the pitch fouled away by Park Ju Hong and Jay Hoon fourth in the ABL with seven homers but he is not on the roster for GK. 0-1 to Park. As you can see, the wind blowing the netting, blowing the dirt just about everywhere here at Melbourne Ballpark. 0-1's a curve, settles on the outside corner for a called strike two. 
And he'd like an inning double play, but you know Harkin is just looking to get the out right here. Two on and one out. Two won the score with GK in the lead. Harkin deals. Just missing upstairs. Count one and two. It's just all about getting outs. I mean, that's the goal. It doesn't matter how it's done. Um, you know, it just late this late in the season, it doesn't matter how you win a ball game. You got one more run than the other team, it's a win. That's what this team needs to to worry about right now, just winning games. And I think that we saw in the Adelaide series a really good mindset. Look, you get down, but you just chip away. You don't all have to, you don't have to get it all back in one inning. But pitchers, when they, when you're they're pitching from behind, just worry about limiting the damage. That's a good way to do it. Getting Park Ju Hong to get an ugly swing on a nasty curveball. Fourth K of the day for Harkin and a big out number two here in the third. Yeah, buried that curveball in the dirt, and that's a great pitch because. It forced Park to chase, and that's not a pitch you make contact on because it's in the dirt. Uh, you know, that's where you want that breaking ball. And if it's a ball, it's a ball. Who cares? The count would have been two and two. But he got the swing and the miss, so perfect placement there. If you can get that swinging strike on a pitch that, if it was hit, it would have just been a dribbler. That's what you want. First pitch to Song Chan. Oh, hit high in the air. Dropping lower in a left center field, but still an easy play for Aaron Whitefield to finish it off the third inning. Geelong strands two on a hit, but don't score a run. And it is still a one-run ball game. We'll take it into the bottom of the third inning. 2-1. GK leads, but the Aces looking to close the gap. At the Sporty Vibe, we're a little different to other pubs and bars. We have more than just cooks. We have chefs. We have more than bar service. We have table service. We have more than specials. We have specialty. We have more than live sporting events, we have atmosphere. And we have more than customers, we have fans. It's more than a sports bar, it's a sporting globe. meals from light and easy's new spring menu and enjoy amazing food more free time and a healthier life no shopping or cooking and no contracts or subscriptions just your choice of affordable delicious meals delivered to your door order today create the perfect look for your home with you blinds once a year stock take sale for two weeks only all you blinds products are half price yes half price you blinds australia more value for you head to youblinds.com.au the Aces get out a little bit of trouble there in the top of the third. They head to the bottom half, trailing by a run with the top of the order coming up to the plate. Burke, Glendinning, and Stoll in a 2-1 ball game here on Tuesday Night Baseball. First pitch to Burke in there for a called strike. He extended his on base streak to seven straight games with a high chopper of a single in the first. So John Juan deals inside. Burke lets it drop for ball one. And we want to give a shout out to a special Aces fans who unfortunately has fallen a little bit ill. Was trying to come to the ballpark on this Tuesday night. As so deals. Burke fouls it back one and two. So Hudson Lauer, we really wish we could have you at the ballpark today, but we know he's watching back home, and we're, ob we're really thankful for him and the rest of the viewers who have been sticking with us all season long. Hopefully we'll have some playoff baseball to give for you next week as Burke lets the breaking ball go out 2-2. Two and two. And we also want to wish Hudson a, a speedy recovery. Hope we can get him back to the ballpark soon. Absolutely. Appreciate the support. Um, it's been a fun season. We appreciate any support we get from the Aces fans. So. 2-2 bounced in front of the plate to Burke. Three balls and two strikes to the Aces left fielder. So, 
stepping off as we see the wind intensifying a little bit. Even blowing the rosin bag a little bit off the mount. You can really see how heavy the wind is today. So So Jun Wan just wanting to wait it out a little bit. Burks back in the box now. A full count to the Aces leadoff man. The pitch. Swing and a miss. There's strike three. Three Ks now for So Jun Wan and one out in the bottom of the third inning. Well, the Aces got some really good swings against So the first time through the order. Four hits, including the Dale Homer. So I, I expect them to continue to get good swings the second time through and just see it even better. Now Robbie Glenn Denning, who's one for one on the day, comes up to the plate. And excuse me, check swing over to short. Easy play for Soho Chal, out number two. And you could tell Glenn Denning displeased with himself there and was riding a bit inside. Didn't want to go after it, but he just kind of pokes it out to short. Yeah, he tried to make up his mind a little too late there. Didn't want to commit, and the ball just inadvertently hit the bat. And yeah, he definitely wants that AB back, but, you know, we'll get him next time. Now Jake Skoll, the birthday boy, coming up to the plate. Struck out in his first at bat as this one is chopped foul. And it's probably pretty uncommon for him to be playing baseball on his birthday. A January guy, grew up in Georgia, where it might be hot enough to play what is winter baseball in America, but not a lot of organized ball in the United States at this time of year. Right. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool. It really is. The 0-1 to Skull. Breaking ball just catching the outside corner, and it's 0-2. Now I'm a June birthday, so I've called games and played games on my birthday multiple times in my life, but got a chance to call a game on my half birthday for the first time ever this year. Well, technically last year, this season. 0-2 <laughs> now to Skull. The pitch. Missing low, 1-2. Goal turning 31 today and having a really solid season for the Aces. A homer and four RBIs in his 20th game for Melbourne. He's 21 for 72 on the year. Second strikeout of the day, though, as So Jun Wan gets him swinging to end the inning. So the Aces go down in order for the first time all day, and we are through the first third of the last home game of the regular season. Geelong leads Melbourne 2-1. to one. One Love is there for the moments with the people you love the most. To share the highs and the lows together. It's the one for all people, all times and all places. Brick Lane's One Love Pale Ale, it's the one for all. A hot day has turned into a windy day here at Melbourne Ballpark. The wind right now blowing Geelong's way as GK leads the Aces 2-1, to one, ending here in the fourth inning. Oh Jong Han leads off the force, fouls that into the Aces' dugout, count 0-1. Two runs for GK in that first inning, solo shot by Soho Chow, Kwang Min. 
with a single and a run scored. And they're the only two players for GK that have gone on base. 0-2 now to 0. He swings and misses. It's strike three. Harkin has really settled down since that first inning. Five strikeouts for him in his second consecutive start. It's impressive to watch him go about his work and also to how he reacted to giving up the home run and the single early. Yeah, like you said, it's just the top two guys in the lineup have gotten on base. Everybody else, three through nine, he's just mowed through them. And now he's got the six hitter for GK as Lee Jin Young fouls one away. Two forty hitter on the season. Lee in his first game against Melbourne this year. That's fouled towards third base. Five pitches, five strikes for Scott Harkin here in the fourth. Added to the team in January, played against Perth and Auckland. So was not on the roster for the two series against Melbourne. 0-2, oh, fastball upstairs, and there's the first miss of the inning, 1-2. and two. You know, this Melbourne weather does just does not make sense to me. I mean, it's, <laughs> you look out there now, it's pretty clear. 1-2, curve ball gets below LaVarnway, and it's 2-2. Two and two. And Before, it looked like we were in the middle of a tornado. Yeah, very tornado-looking skies. I mean, now scary. It's, now it's a, like, you know, kind of light blue off in the distance. It's still, you know, kind of grayish and dark out there, like rain, some good rain could be out there, but in the matter of minutes, you go from that to this. Yeah. I just don't get it. Especially when it was hot and sunny for the entire day. So unpredictable. A full count now to Lee. Hark in the pitch, fouled away, and it hit the roof. I think we could have compromised and asked for some of this breeze when it was yeah. as hot as it was earlier in the day with with no wind and taking some away some of it away from now full count the pitch early swing this is looped into left center field and that's going to fall in for a bloop single Lee Jin Young the first hit behind the two spot and now each team has four hits he just flicked his bat out there and he looked a little fooled he was way out in front and Gets rewarded with a hit out of it. Yeah, that Chris Burke single that chopped in front of home plate and bounced as high as I've seen a ball, a ball bounce in a, in a baseball stadium. And there is kind of the redemption for GK, just a, a bloop single where he was way out in front of it. Kim Ju Sung fouls one back. He flied out to Whitefield in his last time up. Runner on first to play with. And Lee Jin Young. Lee dancing around on first. As Harkin slowing himself down a little bit. Fouled away by Kim. It's 0-2. Lee has no stolen bases yet. Was caught on his only attempt. Kim Ju Sung has played a lot of baseball this season for GK. 0 2, curveball, hitting the air out to center field. Whitefield easing under it and making the grab. A quick throw to first base off the bag, and it wouldn't have been in time anyway. But a good idea by Whitefield to put the pressure on Lee Jin Young. I'm a little surprised that Lee was that far off the bag, especially with Whitefield's momentum taking him in. But he's done a good job patrolling center on a day where. Not a lot of people want to play outfield on a day like today. Yeah, the, the wind, as heavy as it is, it can't be easy to play in the outfield as the curveball settles in for a strike to Cho Hyung Woo. Catcher also making his first appearance against Melbourne. 0-1, cut on and missed. A breaking ball gets by him for 0-2. Arkin deals. Bouncing in front of LaVarnway. It'll keep the runner on first base, though. And it is now one and two. See if he can get out of it. I mean, Harkin's been great so far tonight. Five strikeouts already. Big time for number six. The one, two. Inside on the fastball, two and two. How about that curveball 
drop that down 12-6 right now after going fastball up and in. Definitely has more of the plate open. Off goes the runner. 2-2 is chopped over to short. Glenn Denning fields. Throw to first. Ends the inning. Another inning with a runner on via base hit, but GK leaves, leaves him stranded. No runs, a hit one left. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Aces trailing 2-1. to one. For over 40 years, All Green Nursery has been providing the communities of Melbourne's western and northern suburbs the best advice and results for their gardens. Our retail centre, indoor plant space and expansive nursery floor showcases over 150 varieties of vibrant plants, most of them grown locally right here in Werribee South. We have qualified horticulturists on site to help assist with all your gardening needs and our home decor section is stocked with a full range of quality options. All Green Nursery, your local plant nursery and garden centre. Visit our sites in Hoppers Crossing and Epping. Access Hire are your access equipment specialists. We have an extensive range of state-of-the-art equipment and we pride ourselves on delivering outstanding customer service. We have the youngest fleet of equipment in Victoria and we are consistently adding new machines. We get to know our customers and form partnerships with them. This video is of our partnership with the Victorian Government at Reservoir Station. All Star Access Hire are proud sponsors of the Melbourne Aces and our All Star Bar. Plenty of fans here at Melbourne Ballpark after a record-breaking weekend in round number nine. 5,000 fans coming to Melbourne Ballpark in the final full home series of the regular season. And they're still spilling in for a crucial inning to round one. Daryl George leads off the inning. A sliding stop at second by Kim. And the first out in the inning after a really good defensive play by Kim Ju Sung. Really nice play. Not a lot of time to react to that. He just took a hit away from Daryl. It looked like that was going to be a seeing eye single there for George. But instead, it's one out here in the fourth. Ryan LaVarnway up at the plate. Jared Dale in the on deck circle. Both of these guys with potential to tie the game. We already saw Dale hit a solo homer, and LaVarnway has hit a couple since joining the team for round seven in Canberra. That time he lines one just fair down the left field line. LaVarnway is going to run around first as the ball rolls into the corner. He'll head to second, and LaVarnway is the tying run on second base with a one-out double. Nice piece right there. Got, got his bat head out on it and just ripped it down the line. We'll take a look at the replay right here. You know, this is a guy who just knows the strike zone so well. Such good bat speed. I mean, look at that. Just rips it right down the line. Kept it fair. Now the tying runs in scoring position with only one out. And the hottest hitter to come do it. Jared Dale, a solo shot already. Hits in each of his last seven. And a couple of multi-hit games in big spots against Adelaide this past weekend. So John Wan slowing things down with a runner on base. First pitch misses outside. Ball one. A big late surge for Dale, a guy who's been getting better and better every series, it seems like. And man, did he have a good round against Adelaide. 1 0, hit high in the air and foul. Well, he's really coming on strong, and you just see the confidence up there. You, know, you, you look at him in the box, and you know he's confident. 8 for 17 against Adelaide with two RBIs, one of them in walk off fashion. In a much needed game for Melbourne. Had they lost that, this game would not potentially count towards a playoff run. Breaking ball low and away, two and one. Dale also hit his second home run of the season. 
A shot against Perth back in round two. He represents the go-ahead run. Lavarnway, the tying run on second. 2-1. Upstairs, 3-1. and one. You think so is pitching around Dale a little bit? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. He, just, he can't leave one in the middle of the zone again, otherwise yeah. it may be a 3-2 game. Hi, can you hear me there? 3-1 the count. The 2-1 ball the ball score, ball. Geelong in the lead. So Jun Wan deals. Fast ball, zips into the inside corner, fills up the count to three and two. Robson on deck for the aces. And you'd love to see him come up with two runners on. Full count to Dale, so deals. Dale grounds that one to short. Easy play for Soho Chow. Dale sprinting towards first, but is beaten by a step. A nice throw from Soho Chow for out number two. And Dale didn't take anything for granted there. Busted it out of the box. New ball hitting the hole there. Yeah, routine play for Shaw, but Dale had a chance to beat it with good speed. Hey, you, you want to keep the pressure on these guys. And that's exactly what Dale did. Yeah, have to force a quick throw, maybe force an errant throw. Now the throw's on the money, but still, you make the defense make the plays. And it's not just make the play in the field. It's, you know, you've got to make them make a good throw and by busting it down the line there. So now two outs for Robson. He's hit four home runs this season. Two of them in this ballpark, two of them against Geelong. That's first pitch in there for a called strike. He had a couple home runs against Perth. Had a two home run game wow. in the last game of the last series against Geelong. The 0 1. Outside on the breaker, 1 and 1. Robson hitting 243 on the year, four homers. As Mike mentioned earlier, the Aces leader in on base percentage. 1 1. Outside, 2 and 1. Robson scored the go-ahead run after J.D. Osborne led off the ninth with a walk. Robson was put on to pinch run, but four walks for Todd Van Steensel led to an Aces walk-off victory, their second in three days. The 2-1. In on the ground, right back to the pitcher, so underhand flip to first for out number three, and once again, the Aces leave a runner stranded in scoring position. A one-out double from Lavarnway does not come home. And no runs on a hit, one left for Melbourne. Keeps the score 2-1 through the first four innings. The makers of Dasher and Fisher began in 2017 with a vision to specialize in gins that speak of place and expect Tasmania's remoteness and untouched beauty. Take the, taste the rich, fertile soils and pure Cradle Mountain snow melt in every drop of Dasher and Fisher Tasmanian gym. Crew fitness and performance has a more than vision. What drives the crew team and its members is a dedication to community and an eagerness to be surrounded by a personal growth culture. Stop into their location in Braybrook or Hoppers Crossing to see for yourself. Now is the time to save on Ace's membership for the next season. For more on that, here's our own Ed Wyatt. I am here down in the stands amongst it. Great crowd tonight. Final home stand of the season, but that doesn't mean the baseball is over. Oh no, it's just beginning because the Aces will be back next year. We've got 2023, 2024 memberships on sale now, and there's early bird pricing. You know what that means? The early bird gets the worm. Get your membership for next year at this year's price. Does that make sense? I think it does. Top of the fourth inning. Aces trailing two to one, but it's been a really contentious back and forth game as we've seen quite a lot of against Geelong. And Ed is to make the quick trip up from the stands into the broadcast booth. Uh, How you doing, Ed? Uh, I'm not nearly as good a shape as I used to be. It is, tell you what, that wind out there, yeah. worse than the rain. Rain not too bad. I think you may have dodged a bullet. Have a look. Hard to say, but wind is absolutely a factor. Well, we saw the radar. It seemed like the heavy stuff had, had kind of come past us as yes. Scott Harkett opens up the fifth with a ball outside. 
but I think the wind might have helped you get up here so quickly. I think it did. I had yeah. a tailwind. Just blew you right up the stairs. You didn't even move your legs. <laughs> I think it definitely helped on Dale's home run. I do think the wind actually had a really good experience. It was swirling and carrying out sort of towards the left field. 1-1. One, one. Kim hits it on a line and bounces past the glove of Jared Dale into left for a base hit. Kim holds up after heading past first base. And that is a leadoff base runner for Geelong. I think that's going to be ruled a hit. Yeah, I think it is. That's the top of the order for Geelong Korea and Seo Ho Chung. So Kim So Jin on first base with a single. And now So Ho Chal, who has two hits today. He's been hitting the ball real well. Been a lot of hard hits, John. Yeah, each team has been swinging the bat real well yeah. today. It's officially marked down as Geelong's sixth hit as the first pitch settles in for a strike to So. A homer and a single for Soho Chal, so he's halfway to the cycle. I think for them, Geelong Korea, nothing to play for, right? Having some fun. You yeah. know they're going to be competitive. That's in their culture. That's in their uh, sort of team concept. They're not going to come out here and embarrass themselves, but they're absolutely <laughs> having, a, having a good time swinging the bat. And these are guys that are getting ready for a very competitive KBL. Mm. So you know they're going to want to bring their A game, particularly against Melbourne, as a 1-1 pitch misses upstairs, 2-1. Just looking at the body language, watching in the field, made a couple of plays. There was a real excitement when they when they actually made those plays. So yeah, they're absolutely in, in to win this thing. Geelong getting their first series win against Melbourne when they were on the road. Hot shot to second, Khalil Fields to Glendinning for one. It's picked by Daryl George. Double play. Flashing the leather at first base and a huge double play for two outs here in the fifth. Look at it, Josh. And it's one thing we saw in that last series. Daryl George absolutely playing the heck out of first base. He's playing like a guy who wants to play off baseball, that's for sure. <laughs> Tell you what, he wouldn't be moving off first base if I'm Peter Moore. He's staying there. He can play first, third. That's the thing with George, very versatile mm. player. And I don't think there has been an H Aces player who has played just one position in the field, except for the pitcher. Yeah, it's, and that's been a trademark of this team over the years, that ability to step in when needed. And, and that offers the managers, whoever it was at the time, an opportunity to uh, play with the lineup a little bit. So a 2-0 count with two outs to Quan Kwong Min. The DH for GK as he gets a curve ball from Harkin to make it 2-1. I like that. DH for GK. Just rolls up your yeah. Just easy. 2-1. Hit hard. George diving and he knocks it down, but there's no one at first base. Harkin a bit late on the coverage. And George may have just saved a double with a diving stop. Yeah, nothing really we could he could do about that, as you mentioned, with no one covering first. But continuing that play over the first base, just fun to watch. And he's swinging the bat well. There's nobody better in the ABL to watch, honestly. You haven't watched him over the years. Just so much fun to watch. Loves playing the game. Great guy. You know, he's got the whole package. And granted, I've only really seen him on a baseball field, but he's just always happy when he's on a baseball field. Yeah. Bat, glove in his hand, you know. And I feel like a, a really good-natured, happy guy like that, he just seems at his happiest here at Melbourne Ballpark. Yeah. Scott Harkin has to be happy with that. Two straight strikes to Park Ju Hong, the guy who's gone down swinging twice against the right-hander from California. The 0-2. Curveball inside, Lavarnway is going to miss the stolen base chance. And it is an easy swipe of second for Quan Quang Min. Two swipes today. And Lavarnway tried to go for the back pick at first, but Quang was halfway to second base at that time. Now it looks like they potentially may be sending him back to first. Is that what I'm looking at here? I'm not sure. I'm just speculating. That seems what may be happening. And the coaches just seem confused about it. It does look like he's walking back to first base. Because you got to think, LeVarnway, he's been a major league catcher for, for 10 years. He was going to first on that stolen base. So 
So it seems like the stolen base from Quan Quang Min has been nullified. We'll have to try and get some more info on that. The interpreter is shaking his head down there, so he disagrees with the call. <laughs> as well as the management. I think maybe the play might have been blown dead because yeah, there was a bit of a, a yeah. bobble from LeVar away. 1-2, Quan stays and Park fouls it away. It'll still be 1-2. Hmm. So another one of those lucky breaks that we're talking about. That, <laughs> that's certainly something that goes the ace's way. Nothing to argue. Although one more strike nullifies the base runner anyway. 1-2. Curveball chopped up the middle over the head of Harkin. Khalil grabs it, misses the tag, throws to first, and there's the out. So stolen base or not, Quan Quang Min will stay on the base pass. No runs on two hits and one left for Geelong Korea. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth, a 2-1 lead for GK. We're halfway home in the Aces' last home game of the regular season. At the Sporting Globe, we're a little different to other pubs and bars. We have more than just cooks, we have chefs. We have more than bar service, we have table service. We have more than specials, we have specialty. We have more than live sporting events. We have atmosphere. And we have more than customers. We have fans. It's more than a sports bar. It's a sporting globe. meals from light and easy's new spring menu and enjoy amazing food more free time and a healthier life no shopping or cooking and no contracts or subscriptions just your choice of affordable delicious meals delivered to your door order today create the perfect look for your home with you blinds once a year stock tech sale for two weeks only all you blinds products are half price yes half price you blinds australia more value for you head to youblinds.com.au We're halfway home in the final home game of the regular season. We go from round one, or round nine to round one. As the final game of round one was rained out between the Aces and Geelong. Still some happy fans here at Melbourne Ballpark. And the official Aces team shop, of course. Not too late if you're here to get some merchandise or go online, melbourneaces.com.au. And the stuff looks fantastic. Yeah, I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. I'm going to need an extra suitcase to bring some fun stuff home for my family as wife, Whitefield tails this one out of bounds and foul. Yeah, I mean, I did. I actually bought one of the uh, blue wind cheaters, took it back to my dad for Christmas. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I'm still deciding on, on what to get my family. I think mm. my dad always gets the same thing. He's a big hat guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just get him the, yep. the jokingly named dad hats. <laughs> a couple of those. Yep. Do the trick. I'm getting him the, the bright pink one. If, you, if you're listening, dad, you're going <laughs> to bright pink aces hat. <laughs> to go with this bright pink Yankee hat? Oh, he wouldn't be caught dead wearing a Yankee hat. <laughs> Whitefield hits this one high in the air out to left field. Oh, Jung Han chasing towards the foul oh. line. Diving and he won't make the play. Whitefield speeds around first into second base and a leadoff double for Aaron Whitefield. That was one of those tricky ones, wasn't it? Because I think it would have landed fair, but I'm not sure with that wind. Yeah, the, the wind really took this one. Yeah. It seemed like it was on the warning track initially, and Oh Jong Han just kept trying to find it, and it just landed in the perfect spot right next to the foul line. And Whitefield stays just sprinting, and he moves right into second base. And I think the GK management is arguing where that hit. It looked to me like it hit plainly fair. I thought so as well. I thought his glove hit it in fair, and then maybe it carried into foul after yeah. it caromed off his glove. Let's have a look, see if we can tell. This may not be an angle for it, but here we go. So I thought it was going to drift out of play, but I think he hits it. That's fair. That's absolutely a fair ball. Yeah, and 
pretty promptly the Geelong manager, Lee byung Ku and his translator is, are just going right back in the dugout because there's no, no. there's no argument there. So Whitefield tried for extra bases in the second. He gets the extra bases here. Six hits for Melbourne and a leadoff double with their most dangerous base runner in scoring position. He may steal, but if Khalil finds green grass, this game will be done. First pitch into Khalil, and it's an 0-1 count. Khalil flied out to center his first time up. A guy whose hitting has dramatically improved since the beginning of the season. And the glove has always been solid, no matter where he is put in the infield. A one slider in there for a strike. Yeah, Khalil swings nice and pitch. misses. Yeah, those sidearm sliders have been very tricky. A lot of fun to watch, as you can imagine, from those uh, luxury seats down right behind home plate. Great place to watch a game. Really interesting with the sidearm. I don't think there's a better seat in a house, in, in any house, than those. 0-2. Oh, Khalil lets it go. Called strike three on the outside corner. Ouch. A late punch out from Stuart Howe, but so Jun Wan getting his first strike out since the third, his fourth overall. Or his fifth overall, excuse yes, me. Yes. Well, I, can, I can't count. But I, I was waiting for you. I was just about to draw the line through the fifth. Yeah. You said four to go, maybe on the wrong, which I usually am. Usually you're right, John. Every I think that's giving me too much credit. <laughs> One out, runner on second for Chris Burke, who delivered the tying run on Sunday. And he would like to do that again here. And I think Geelong watched some tape because the shortstop, Soho Chal, is right next to second base I think partly to hold Whitefield on mm. but also because that's where Burke hit that game tying single look at that right into the shift Whitefield to third so Ho Chal throws out Burke at first base that is very well spotted by you Josh and if they indeed watch tape which they probably did that is really something that's really good baseball but it does get the runner to third two outs and a runner on third base the aces Still hitless in, I think there are six at-bats with runners in scoring position now. Six or eight, one of the two. Get an updated uh, updated look at that stat, but it's Robbie Glenn Denning who inside outs the first pitch. Right past the turf in the outfield. Song Sean Oi makes the grab, and the Aces unable to bring home the runner on a leadoff double. No runs, one hit, one left. We'll head into the sixth inning. GK still leads it 2-1. And Aussie Mike will come back in for the play-by-play -play for the sixth and the seventh. The Aces season on the line. Stick with us on Aces TV. Hit that. One Love is there for the moments with the people you love the most. To share the highs and the lows together. It's the one for all people, all times and all places. Rick Lane's One Love Pale Ale. It's the one for all. We move to the top of the sixth inning at Melbourne Ballpark. Ozzy, Mike and Ed Wyatt with you in the booth. Josh taking the next couple innings off. Well, Ed... 
Similar story here tonight, a close game in the middle innings. The Aces are in it, but they play from behind as they bring on John Kennedy on this punt, one, two, three pitching change. More numbers on Kennedy in a minute. But another close game, the Aces are in it, and that's all you can ask for at this point. It is indeed, although I don't like seeing runners stranded, especially when that leadoff runner makes it to second base, lead leadoff batter makes it to second base. But you're right, we've seen this before, there's time to make it up. If Kennedy can do what he's done for most of the season, that's shut the team down without allowing any runs, then the Aces can start it again in the bottom of the sixth. So Peter Moylan's first move to the bullpen tonight brings on the southpaw Kennedy on this punt, one, two, three pitching change. And on one pitch, he's got one out. Glenn Dinning over to George, and Song Chan Oi, one of the best hitters in the league this season, is retired. Well, that's massive. Yeah, it certainly is. One of the best hitters in the league, and you get him on one pitch. That's beautiful. That's the kind of stuff Kennedy's been doing most of his career, to be honest. Quietly having a really solid season, a three ERA for John. He's been one of the most trusted weapons out of Moylan's pen. He's pitched in each of the last four games now, so you know that late in the season when the games mean so much that you know if a guy's pitching four days in a row, he's definitely yep. in that A team out of the pitching staff. And this is one of those rare things where he's not in a, in a jam. You yeah. Know, it's always like, hey, John, I got good news for you. Coming to pitch, bad news. There's two men on. Yeah, no. he seems to be the guy that has to get out of a lot of jams. Breaking ball misses into the left-handed hitting Oh Jong Han. Talking to Josh about that, the, this Geelong Korea key, team is in this to win it, no doubt about it. A lot of talent on this GK mm. team, and mm. I mean, you know, 13 wins this season. They they play every game tough, no doubt about it. Yeah, I was here calling a lot of their games when they were first starting in the league, and. It, didn't nearly have this talent. It was kind of sad, actually. Yeah. They only won a couple of games. This is a completely different uh, ball club. One and two, the count, the pitch from Kennedy. Hot shot to the right side. That's through for a base hit. So Oh Jong Han picks up his first hit of the night. One out base runner for Lee Jin Young. Well, Kennedy in two-thirds of an inning on Sunday in the win against Adelaide through just 12 pitches. Faced two batters, struck them both out. Threw eight pitches the night before. So not a ton of pitches, no. but getting a lot of use. Well, it's nice to see a guy be able to get out of innings quickly and not need to throw a lot of pitches. Yeah, because then, of course, you can use him again, as you said, four consecutive nights. You can't do that if he's throwing a lot of pitches, obviously. Short lead for the man on first. Swing and a miss. Nasty changeup down mm, again. Good pitch. Scott Harkin was great starting on short rest, just three days of rest for Scott today. He matched what he did on Friday going five innings. This time he gave up two runs. Both came in the first inning. Here's a ground ball to second, could be two. Khalil to Glendinning, over to George for the second time tonight. It's an inning ending 4-6-3 double play. And the Aces are out of another inning with a zero on the board. So we'll head to the bottom of the sixth. The Aces have four more chances to put up some runs. They trail by one in middle innings. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth after this on Aces TV. For over 40 years, All Green Nursery has been providing the communities of Melbourne's western and northern suburbs the best advice and results for their gardens. Our retail centre, indoor plant space and expansive nursery floor showcases over 150 varieties of vibrant plants, most of them grown locally right here in Werribee South. We have qualified horticulturists on site to help assist with all your gardening needs and our home decor section is stocked with a full range of quality options. All Green Nursery, your local plant nursery and garden centre. Visit our sites in Hoppers Crossing and Epping. All Star Access Hire are your access equipment specialists. 
We have an extensive range of state-of-the-art equipment and we pride ourselves on delivering outstanding customer service. We have the youngest fleet of equipment in Victoria and we are consistently adding new machines. We get to know our customers and form partnerships with them. This video is of our partnership with the Victorian Government at Reservoir Station. All Star Access Hire are proud sponsors of the Melbourne Aces and our All Star Bar. Jake Skoll, Daryl George and Ryan LaVarnway, 3-4-5 due up for the Aces in a crucial sixth inning. Aces trailed Geelong Korea 2-1 in a makeup game from round one. Big game for the Aces as they need this win to keep their playoff hopes alive. If the Aces win their final five games of the regular season, they get in the playoffs. If they lose any of them, they're out. It's as simple as that, Ed, as Jake Skoll comes to bat for the third time. Look, running out of chances, but... Still four innings to play with, but you'd like to see the Aces get some momentum and start driving some of these uh, runners in. As silly as it sounds, Mike, you want to win this one, right? Go to Perth with a chance. You don't want to lose this one and then have to trudge over to Perth and face them. And Skull has really struggled tonight at the plate. It just doesn't look comfortable up there. And to your point about that Perth series meaning something, I mean, that's a big difference to win this game and have that five-hour flight uh, knowing that you go yeah. there and win four, you yep. get in. So, you know, the hope is that that is the case. There's the one-two pitch to Skull, swing and a miss. So he's down on strikes for the third time. Mm. Well, so has looked really good. He allowed the leadoff homer to Dale to open the second, but that's it so far. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're right, with the 3-1 series win over Perth earlier in the season, you know, you've got an opportunity... You know, you've got, you've got to think that you've got to crack at it. But, yeah, you want to give yourself a chance by winning this one. The middle innings have been an issue for the Aces this season. In innings four through six, opponents are outscoring the Aces by 15 runs. Now, neither team has scored in innings four through six to this point. And if the Aces do in this inning, it would at least tie the game. But those middle innings crucial, and at least on the pitching side and defense side, they've done a good job of throwing up zeros on the board in, in these middle innings. Yeah, that sixth inning in particular has been really bad for the Aces, so maybe we turn it around here with a couple of hits coming up here in the bottom of the sixth. The Aces are 0-8 when they score two runs or less this season. One right now. Pitch to George is over. It's 0-1. But the Aces are 13-10 when they score three or more. Big difference there. Huge. And we're not even talking like six or seven runs. It's just three runs and they've got a winning yeah, record. Exactly. Next pitch to Daryl, with two out of play. It has been that kind of season, hasn't it? Just close losses, little things here and there. Throw a few things in a different way, and you're in, you're in the playoffs already, really, or, or just about on the brink of them. 15 wins for the Aces this season, but 13 wins in games they've actually played. The entire round five series at Auckland was wiped out. George rips one through the hole into right field, a base hit. So he picks on an 0-2 fastball and sends one through, but the point about that is in the 13 games they've won on the field, they've scored three or more. So basically if you sc they score three or more, they win. They score two or less, they lose. So 2-1 right now. Still, uh, <laughs> still, Still 11 outs to play with. That's right. We need a couple runs is what it means. <laughs> Number, the numbers don't lie. I, I'm just reading them. You know? right. I'm just reading them. And reading them very well. I'm just relaying the information. Don't hit the player. Hit the game. <laughs> Don't shoot the message. Yeah, right? that's what it is. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Here's LaVarnway doubled in the fourth. The Aces have had traffic on the bases mm. pretty much every inning, you know, except the third. Yes. Every inning except the third, they've had a man on or more. 1-0, oh, that's outside. Three extra base hits for the Aces in this game. Seven overall. Seven hits overall. A lot of hits in this game. Not a lot of runs for either side. Mm. Yeah, 14 hits total. Three runs total. 2-0 to Lavarnway. There's a strike on the outer half. How many baseball players, you know, walk around, get ready for the game, reading a novel? Yeah. Well, that's Ryan Lavarnway. Mm -hmm. Interesting guy. He's an intellectual guy. He surely you know, is. I mean, he sure he is. He's, ex, uh, he's extremely fun to talk to, just with, mm. whether it's baseball or something outside of baseball. It's always a good conversation. He's a really interesting guy. We'd love to have had him around 
for the entire yeah. season. Just pick his brain. Mm. You know, I just I love sitting down and talking to guys about their careers. You know, fun teammates you've had, uh, best parks to play in. You know, which stadium's got the best food. You know, things right. like that. And, yeah. You know, what was it like? You know, in Levarway's case, you know, catching this pitcher, or facing this pitcher in the big leagues, things like that. Oh. Just talking to Justin Huber, our GM, on the day on a daily basis. Just hearing here and there the stories of He's his career. He's got some great I mean, stories. Yeah, you know, it's, he does. It's it's wild to hear some of these big league stories, and you know, and we're around so many here at Melbourne. I mean, there's so many big league connections here with the Aces. Ryan, the latest to join the bunch, two two sent through the hole in the left. Back to back base hits from George and Lavarnway. Aces got something cooking here. The tying and go ahead runs are on base in the sixth. Just to hear which way this goes out the game that got natted out. There were so many gnats or mosquitoes that, that, that it was just like a wave when the game got canceled. Somewhere up in Canada, like okay. Manitoba or somewhere in the summer. So many mosquitoes and flying insects, they canceled the game. Baseball, baseball is just different. You don't hear things like that. No. That, that doesn't happen in basketball. You play no. indoors. It doesn't happen in hockey. No. Football, they play through anything. I mean, it's no. crazy. Well, here's Jared Dale, homered in the second. Possibly wind-aided. Yeah. Wind was really whipping at the time. But Picked a good time to hit it up in the air. It certainly did. He's got a real chance here now with two men on and only one out. Hottest hitter on the team. Mm. One of the hottest hitters in the league. I haven't seen what other guys are doing right now across the rest of the ABL, but he's up there. This is down a run, bottom six. Pitch from So. He's got that breaking ball that he drops on the outer half of his righties. Remarkable, isn't it? That's got to be tough to pick up out of the hand, you know, with his release point. Geelong Korea looking to spoil the Aces' playoff hopes. Pitch to Dale. Fastball high. Snap throw down to second. That was a good throw, but George got back. That was a good throw. Interesting. Not sure if that's something he picked up on or. He looked ready to Joe throw. Just sort of. Yeah, he was ready to throw, wasn't he? Got rid of it quickly. Put it right there. Uh, you know, things like that, that's the indication that you know Geelong Korea wants this game bad. Mm. Looking to play spoiler. Yeah. You know, you don't do you don't do things like that if you're just going through the motions. One one, that's outside. And Ace is doing a good job of laying off these sliders off the plate. Yeah. And picking on the fastball. We saw George lay off a slider, go go fastball to right. And then we saw Lavarway do the same thing. Uh, took the fastball to left. Daryl's the tying run out there. That's a massive run. Pitch, that's outside. And well, they, they snuck this by us, but Lavarnway no longer in the game. J.D. Osborne pinch running for him at first base. So Well spotted. Looks like J.D. will go in to catch the rest of the way. Now that's a, that's a move for to get a little more speed out there. Takes Ryan's bat out of the lineup, but you got to fight for those runs when you got the chance. Dale takes another one. Good pitch there coming back. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's it's a bit of a gamble, but you do need to do that. I think you take his bat, as you said, but also his, his leadership and you know he's now behind the plate. But on the other hand, you're right. You got to you got to make some take some chances. And I've I've really liked the moves that Moylan's made. As aggressive as he's managed these last two, the, this is this game and the last series. Agree. Payoff pitch to Dale. He fights one off, and this is the type of year you have to do it. I mean, if a guy doesn't have it on the mound, you yank him. You got another guy ready in the pen. Yep. Um, you know, the strategic moves we saw on Sunday against Adelaide. You know, a yep. pinch hitting decision and a pinch running decision both worked. Yep. And it led to a win. Well, the man on first, Osborne, who's pinch running for Lavarnway, he went three for three and reached base safely in all four of his plate appearances on Sunday. So it's a nice piece to have in the game as well. 3 2. Dale sends one on the ground to third. This could be two to second for one. It pulled. Oh, here comes the runner home. George tries to score the throw to the plate. In and out of the glove of the catcher, Cho, and he's safe. The Aces tie the game on a wild play. Osborne's out at second on the fielder's choice, but Daryl George never stopped running, and that's a big time tying run. That's a very strange play because Osborne thought he was out by a mile, so he's going to break it up. He slides early, 
the, the throw is off the base. He could have been safe if he'd done a normal slide. George is probably out here if the catcher holds onto the ball, but Show loses it right there. And we got a tie game. Wow, all of a sudden we're knotted at two. The Dale safe at first on the fielder's choice. George comes around to score. And Osborne forced out at second. So the inning continues. Here's Jacob Robson, and now he hits with the game tied. <laughs> That's one from the scorebook. Yeah, so five to four fielders choice. And like you said, yeah. the second baseman, Kim, was off the bag. He had to go back and touch it. And all, while all that was happening, George darted for home, and he made it. Now you're right, he's probably out if, if the ball's on to hung yeah. on to. But sometimes you got to make the defense make a play, and... That's what we were talking what about, happened, right? Yeah. Taking some chances. Love it. That's a playoff atmosphere baseball for you. <laughs> Dale bluffs a steal attempt. Os Robson drops one down. And it's handled by the pitcher. So 1-3 on the putout, and the inning is over. But we're tied at two after six full. The Aces get one in the bottom of the sixth. A weird play, a fielder's choice that leads to a run. You don't see it often, but the Aces get the run on the hustle from Daryl George. So we go to the top of the seventh. Game tied at two. Big one here in Melbourne. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to. Keep it locked right here on Aces TV. Aussie gardeners are best served by Aussie tools, built specifically for our unique environment and conditions. Back in the 1890s, Leonard Chambers and William Thompson started a beekeeping supply business in Melbourne. Little would they know that their company would go on to change how Australians garden for well over a century. Cyclone is ingrained into our country's history and our way of life. Our tools are long-lasting and purpose-built for hard work. We've been making quality tools for over a century. If they last that long, you can hand them down to the next generation. Good, quality, honest product that the Australian people have grown to love. It's not an Aussie shed without a cyclone. My biggest takeaway of being here for 34 years is just a sense of pride in the product. Australians buy good products. So if they keep on buying, we keep on making, so we'll be still, we'll be, we're here. Cyclone Tools, made for Australians. When enjoying a punt, easy does it with punt one, two, three. Punt123.bet is your home for all your punting needs with same race multis and same game multi options, including daily promotions on all the major sporting and racing events. It's punting made easy. Get in the game with Punt123. Visit Punt123.bet or download the app today. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue for you, call 1-800-858-858. The Aces get a run in the bottom of the sixth to tie the game at two. Daryl George, a hustled play. That looks like Daryl George right there, <laughs> hustling around the bases. The, the kids running. Oh, that's that's always fun here at the ballpark. But Daryl George on a ball hit by Jared Dale to the left side. 5-4 fielder's choice at second. The throw is offline, which forced the second baseman for Geelong Korea, Kim, to go off the bag, then step on second. And then by that time, George was headed home. The throw was in time. The tag was there. But the catcher, Cho, didn't hold on to the ball. And all of a sudden, the Aces tied the game. <laughs> That's a little crazy play that we talked about for the last four or five days. John Kennedy out for another inning. He, th he threw just nine pitches to get three outs in the sixth. And now there's a single up the middle from Kim Ju Sung. And just like that, the go-ahead runs back on base for Geelong Korea here in the seventh. Couldn't have hit that in a better spot, really. No one had a chance at that. Right up the middle. Yep. The lead off hit from Kim. Here is the catcher Cho. What a busy inning. So here is Cho, and that play at home could turn to turn out to be a huge one. As Daryl George, like we said, you know, took a gamble, took a chance, made the defense make a play. Jolong Korea didn't finish it off. The Aces got a run because of it. You see his face after the play, anguish, and then he kind of had a smile. It's kind of like. We're almost at it. Pitch down and in. Kennedy looking for another double play ball. The Aces turned an inning ending 4-6-3 double play to end the sixth. 
They got a double play in the fifth as well. <laughs> Scott Harkin started for the Aces. Five innings of two-run ball. Struck out five. And walked just one. Well, in his last two outings, Scott has done a great job limiting base runners. He gave up six hits today. But in his last two starts in ten innings, he's only walked two. Now Kennedy out for a second inning of relief. Here's a ground ball. Could be two. Dale. Over to Khalil. George at first throws off line, so they don't get two, but they get the lead man. Throw just a little bit off the line. George, as miraculous as he's played first base these last few days, couldn't do anything with that one. Yeah, he, even he wasn't uh, <laughs> making anything happen there. No. But, but he does save an overthrow coming off the bag yes. there. It looks like Geelong Korea has a pinch hitter here. This is Kim So Jin's spot in the order. Actually, no, it might still be, might still be who it is. Yeah, we'll double check. Now they are pinch hitting. It's it's Kim Tae Yin. Fifty-two. Yes. Kim Tae Yin pinch hitting. So Lee Byung Kyu's gone to his bench, just like Peter Moylan did in the last half inning as J.D. Osborne entered the game as a pinch runner for Ryan Lavarnway. Next one from Kennedy fouled back. <laughs> Top of seven, there's three more chances for the Aces to get a run, win this thing, and set up that big series in Perth. Kennedy working quickly, has another one spoiled foul, and the count's one and two. A lot of use for John lately. He's pitched five times in the new year. And overall on the season, this is his 11th game. There's the Brains Trust there. John Diebel on the left. Peter Moylan on the right doing a little dance. A little a dance of nerves, I would think, potentially for Pete. Tight game, a lot on the line. It's essentially playoff baseball in the regular season. Well, this one's sent in the gap into right center. Extra bases for the pinch hitter for Geelong, Korea. And the runner is held up at third. Tag at second just late. Well, they made that a lot closer than it probably should have been. Excellent relay from the Aces, but trouble here with one out in the seventh. Runners at second and third. That was a well-hit ball to deep right center. Nice play by Whitefield. But he's never going to get to it, but certainly prevented a run from scoring. A really well-hit ball by the pinch hitter, Kim. So Kim, the pinch hitter, delivers. And now meeting on the mound with Osborne, the catcher. Osborne stayed in to catch when he pinch ran for LaVarnway. Well, we've seen Lee byung Q use his bench and have it work in, in a big way a lot this season against the Aces. Now, he went with a pinch hitter at Geelong, Korea in round six. He went with Ha Tae-hoon, who eventually hit a go-ahead homer. We've seen, we've seen it work. Now the Aces will try to cut this run off, bring the infield halfway. Swing and a miss. Good one there to the leadoff man, Saw. Someone who hit that home run to lead off the game. People were barely in their seats before it was flying over the fence. Didn't even have a chance to get to the keys to the game on the broadcast yes, before I that homer. I noticed that. They popped up right up there as he was rounding the bases. And then Josh was like, all right, well, maybe we should write some new ones. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe. At least the keys, it didn't say prevent the long ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that timing was very, very funny. It shows at third, and Kim is at second. Huge spot in the game. The Aces looking for a shutdown frame after they scored in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch from Kennedy, foul back. So now he's got two strikes on him. Could really use a punch out. Yeah, absolutely right. Two things you want, right? A strikeout or a pop-up. Kennedy's induced a lot of weak contact lately. Yep, true. Need a little more of it here or no contact at all. I'll take that option. Absolutely. ERA down to 281 for John, looking to keep it dipping. Swing and a miss. Good pitch from Kennedy, and he gets that strikeout. So there's the no contact we wanted. There it is. Huge out number two. Certainly is. Of course, this next guy, Quan, two for two with a walk. 
single in the first, single in the fifth. And that could be it for John Kennedy. Peter Moylan's motion to his bullpen. He's got somebody warmed up out there. We'll know for sure once they come out onto the field. But Moylo's going to take the ball from John Kennedy. He continues to make aggressive moves with his bullpen. And they've worked so far. Moylan knows what he's doing out there. So Kennedy's night is done after an inning in two-thirds. He comes out after a big strikeout. Second and third for Geelong Korea. When we come back, we'll take a quick break here for this punt one, two, three pitching change on Aces TV. Ice, U Blinds Australia, more value for you. Head to ublinds.com.au. When enjoying a punt, easy does it with punt one, two, three. Punt123.bet is your home for all your punting needs with same race multis and same game multi options, including daily promotions on all the major sporting and racing events. It's punting made easy. Get in the game with Punt123. Visit Punt123.bet or download the app today. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue for you, call 1 800 858 858. Create the perfect look for your home with Ublind's once a year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all Ublind's products are half price. Yes, half price. Ublind's Australia, more value for you. Head to ublinds.com.au. We've got another punt one, two, three pitching change at Melbourne Ballpark. The Aces go to the bullpen again. And Peter Moylan brings on left-hander Evan Rutsky, who is the most used pitcher on this pitching staff this season, at least out of the bullpen. Well, Rutsky, another one of these late-inning trusted relievers. He's been really good, and this is his fourth straight game as well. He's, made thir he's pitched three of the last four. But, Ev Ed, he's been really good as well. Let's call them the late-inning lefties. We've got a bunch of them out there that uh, Peter Moylan can bring in. He's going to go here. Gretzky to try and get one out really that's his job right now obviously if he can continue into the eight that's great but his main job right now is to get Quan out and to end this rally as you can see some of the crowd enjoying the game early storm here but it flew over pretty quickly it was very windy a little bit of rain that was wild it, it was nuts it was it was you get those sort of dust storm kind of feel out here but it didn't last too long and uh, we now got a really nice night still a bit windy but beautiful night and you see some more people enjoying the game here as we come to one of the more important at bats in the game tonight 13 games this season for Rutsky 15 and a third innings of work 20 strikeouts just four walks and he is dominated left-handed hitter so if there's a spot to use him it's right now lefties hitting just 208 against him. Right, he's only hitting 226, so not much better. But Evans been excellent this season. First pitch, breaking ball gets away from Osborne, but he does a great job to keep it in front because that's that's a go-ahead run for GK if it gets behind him. Yeah, if you want to block a ball, I guess <laughs> right up the third baseline is probably the right way to block it because uh, there's no way that run is getting past him. Great job by Osborne. Rutsky pitched on Friday and Sunday against Adelaide in both of the walk-off wins. He got the win in one of those games. He also threw a season-high two-and-a-third scoreless on Sunday. He was the first man out of the bullpen on Sunday. 1-0 pitch, that's down and away. And in Friday night's game, Rutsky threw a scoreless inning. Probably won't. He, he won't be too careful here, I would think. If he puts Quan on, it's not the worst thing in the world. Base open. Another lefty on deck. Exactly. There's another breaking ball. And he, so he trusts the curveball 2-0 and he gets it over. He does trust that curveball. We saw that over the weekend. Rutsky, a five-pitch pitcher. Four-seam, two-seam fastballs. Curveball splitter change. Two outs in the inning. The Aces looking to strand the go-ahead run on base. Here's Rutsky's 2-1. And misses a little bit mm. high. Just a tad high. I think that's the right call. 3-1. Won't want to give him anything too good here, Mike. 
as you said, we got the lefty on deck in first base. He's open with two outs. Quan's reached in all three of his plate appearances. The guy on deck, Park, is 0 for 3. Here's the 3-1. That breaking oh. ball's over. It's 3-2. and two. A mm. really good curveball there. Sure was. Well, J.D. Osborne letting the defense in front of him know 3-2, two, two outs. The runners won't be off on the pitch because first base isn't occupied, but still a big pitch either way. Rutsky readies his payoff. We'll see what he comes with. The 3-2 breaking ball ripped off his glove out to short. Glendinning barehands it, throws to first. He got him. What a play. A 1-6-3 put out ends the inning. Rutsky saved one run, maybe two, as we take a look at this replay right here. Hot shot right back at him on a curveball. He almost caught it. Yes. Knocked it down. Glendinning barehands and it almost hit the base, but another break that you're talking about, Ed, goes the Aces way, and the Aces finish it off. No runs on two hits, no errors. Two men left in the top of the seventh. Time to stretch at Melbourne Ballpark in a tie game. We'll take a break, but first a word from some of our awesome Aces sponsors. For over 45 years, Hobson's Bay Dental has delivered the best results through continually updating their skills and technology. Dr. Andrews and his team also take great pride in treating patients like family. Melbourne Aces players trust their teeth with Hobson's Bay Dental, and you should too. Business Network International is flourishing across Melbourne's West and Geelong. Local businesses, including the Aces, join BNI for professional development, networking opportunities, and to increase business prospects. Find your local BNI chapter to tap into a wealth of resources and to join a winning team. New Era Technology provides specialized IT solutions for your business around internet and voice communications, managed services, as well as secure cloud hosting for data and software. Trusted by the ACES, New Era has an extensive team of engineers and sales professionals who provide hands-on collaboration that is backed by deep industry training. We are rocking out to the YMCA here at Melbourne Ballpark, one of my favorite stadium jams, Ed, and it's really you know, adding some even more life into this crowd. Yeah, it is. The crowd doesn't really need that much life, I'll be honest. As you've said, we've said this is a playoff game. It's almost a play-in game, yeah. to use a contemporary phrase we see in the NBA and other leagues. You know, need to win this to get into the big four-game series against Perth, which for all intents and purposes is a playoff game. That's a great comparison to the NBA, that, that play-in tournament that they do now. Well, an exciting end to the seventh inning. Evan Rutsky came on to get the final out on a 3-2 pitch. He threw a curveball that Quan Kwong Min sent up the middle. Rutsky knocked it down, almost caught it. The ball trickled out to short where Glendinning picked it up barehanded through to first, and they just, they just got him at the bag. Amazing play, certainly was. New pitcher on the mound as well for... Geelong, Korea. Whitefield tries a bunt on the first pitch of the bottom of the seventh. Whitefield, Khalil, and Burke against the new pitcher for Geelong, Korea on another punt 1-2-3 pitching change. Well, the new man on the mound, it's O oh Se Hun. So O oh is on to pitch, a 2-0-8 ERA this season. First batter he faces is a two-time Helms Award winner, Aaron Whitefield. A one, make it 0-2 after that foul ball. Seeing some of those scenes coming out of the seventh inning stretch. A lot of fans from Geelong here, which is great. Great to sort of see that rivalry. I know the club is Korean-based. They play out of Geelong, but they have a fair few fans here, which is great to see here at Melbourne Ballpark. Left-hander on the mound. A righty-heavy aces lineup. I'd like to see that. 0-2 to Whitefield. He just got a piece to stay alive. Well, the Geelong Korea starter, So Jun Won, went six innings, gave up two runs, only one of them earned. He scattered eight hits, struck out six, and didn't walk a batter. So pretty good line mm. there. Yeah, I was impressed with him, actually. Impressive to work around the eight hits. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Including three extra base hits. O2, Whitefield takes in. First run of the game for the Aces came in the bottom of the second. Jared Dale led off the inning with a homer to left to extend his hitting streak to seven games, which ties a season high for an Aces player. 
Ace has got one back in the bottom of the sixth to tie it. Mm. Daryl George scored from second on a fielder's choice play. On a play you really have to see to understand. It was wild, <laughs> but that's baseball for you. <laughs> Certainly is. You look at the Aces dug out there. A lot of things have gone the Aces' way tonight, and you need that to happen late in the season. Get the breaks at the right time. Yep. Who knows what can happen? Whitefield working a really solid A-B here. He has the count at 2-2. Two and two. I did jokingly say to Graham Lloyd, couldn't he have started this sort of positive rally a, a couple of weeks earlier? He laughed and said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Would have uh, taken away a lot of stress, a lot of drama, a lot of intensity. Whitefield fouls another one off. Good at bat from Whitefield here, just staying alive. You know, it's turned into a really nice night at the ballpark after that yeah. near tornado we went through in the second <laughs> inning. <laughs> It was. They're about to sound the uh, the storm alarms. It was it was a little strange. I was sitting down there behind home plate, and you could just see trash and things just blowing across the field, dust. But you're right. It's beautiful now. 2-2, two, two, misses inside, 3-2. Well, this would be a huge leadoff base runner, especially to get Whitefield aboard with his base stealing ability. This reminds me of Glenn Dinning's at-bat. I think it was on Sunday where he was in the same situation, fouled four or five off, ended up earning a walk. Payoff pitch coming from, oh, here it is. Whitefield chops another one foul. Well, just the way this A-B is going and the way this game is trended and just the way that the season's going for the Aces late with the, with, with the good vibes and the intensity, something makes me think he's finding his way on base here. <laughs> it does have that feel, I must admit. Oh, that left center gap's looking looking big out there. It's you know huge, what I mean? isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive gap. They're out shading there. Whitey to right center. See if he takes advantage. Here's another three-two. A check swing. Ooh, hot shot into the Aces dugout. Look out! Been a few of them this year. Yeah, there've been three or four when I've been here. Yeah, I remember the the season opener. Moylo in, in his normal spot in front of the dugout, uh, close to the on deck circle. There was one that came by him, and then after that he went and grabbed a first baseman's bit and <laughs> went back over the railing. You know, you gotta, you got to protect yourself. Yeah. They're having a laugh about that right now. See what Whitefield does here. Another pitch coming his way. Here's the 3-2 again. Popped up. Right side of the diamond. Foul ground. Is it going to stay in play? It does. The catcher Cho makes the grab. Well, I was wrong. After all Thought that, he was getting on. You, you did, Whitefield would be so frustrated after that great at bat. You go out with a pop up to the catcher. Well, he really made O work. Mm. Certainly did. So now the nine hole hitter, George Khalil, do up. He made O throw 11 pitches right there. Yeah, that's more, more in one at bat than Kennedy threw in the entire sixth inning. <laughs> that's a really good point. Here's George Khalil looking to start things up at the bottom of the order. It's inside. Good eye. Uh, would you expect anything less? Tie game, bottom seven in a must-win game. Here we go again. <laughs> the, the series against Adelaide <laughs> featured three one-run wins for the Aces. Two in walk-off fashion. And grounded a third. And that's foul. After a 7-0 loss, in the Thursday series opener against Adelaide, the Aces won seven to six in ten, won five to four, and then won four to three. <laughs> and here we are, two two. You know, two come from behind wins, two walk off wins. Well, if the Aces win this one, it'll be another come from behind win, which has been a theme all year. Yeah, after walking away from that Thursday night game, you're like, eh, this here we go, this is gonna be a terrible end of the season, and then suddenly, bang, turn it around. Well, the Aces in Geelong, Korea have played some tight games all year. Yes. Now, each of the first three games of the season were decided by exactly three runs. The Aces lost the series opener 3 nothing, won 8-5 to in 13 innings in the next one, then won 6-3, and then the rain out. And then in Geelong in round six, a 7-5 to series opening win, and then they lost three games by a total of four runs, 3-2, yeah. to 4-3, and 5-3. to Yep. A lot of low-scoring games and a lot of really good close games. 3-1. Oh, oh it yeah. got Khalil in the head. Yeah, I think that 
Stewie Howe is pointed to the head and I think says he has to. Wow. Huh? He said he's he all right. Like that, I thought maybe. I thought it hit him in the shoulder. Oh, you know what? It got him in the shoulder, and that. That's what I the thought. The helmet flew off. Yeah. Okay. I did think it did hit him in the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Helmet flew off. Ooh. Okay. Great. Deceiving there. I thought. That's I, good on a number of levels. I thought it got him in the dome. But yes, definitely better than taking one in the head. Yeah. The helmet just flew off. So there's the go-ahead run at first with one out. Khalil runs well. Here's Burke, the leadoff man. One for three, but a quiet night. Let off the first inning with a single. That one almost scoots away from Cho. Burke came into the ball game with his average at 246, OPS approaching 800 at 776. Reaching base at a 333 clip. You'll take one out of three any day. Getting yeah, on base. Absolutely. Now a meeting on the mound as Cho and O will discuss things. What a pretty long conversation out there. Yeah. Jeez. I thought Stuart I Howe would have headed. I think he was distracted by something in the Aces dugout over there. <laughs> thought he would have gone out to break that one up. Yeah, absolutely. I was waiting for that. Well, Chris Burke has seven extra base hits and eight RBIs on the season. It would be a great time to add to both to those totals. Big, big at bat here. Glenn Denning, of course, on deck. Burke extended his hitting streak to six games his first time up. Love seeing streaks like that late in the season. Guys getting going, producing. It is a game of streaks, isn't it, this game of baseball? Well, like you said earlier, and you were joking with Graham, you know, Ace has definitely made things difficult on themselves late in the season, needing to win their final eight to get in. They're almost halfway home, three in a row, looking to make it four, yeah. looking for that Perth series. Well, that's a good point. If you win this, you've won four in a row. You know you can do it. Yeah, looking for that Perth series to, to mean everything. The Aces will fly to Perth later this week and play Friday night, doubleheader Saturday, and then Sunday afternoon for the regular season series finale. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something to go down to Sunday? Oh. Winner take all for a playoff spot? Can you imagine? 2-0, Burke takes high. Good A-B here. Yeah, really good. I mean, that's as intense, intense as it gets. That would be something else. Well, I was talking about it with Josh in the early frames of this one tonight. The Heat are in a weird spot where they could still win the division or they could, if they lose out, if they lose all four to the Aces and the Aces win tonight, then they're out of the playoffs completely. <laughs> Four-pitch walk to Chris Burke, and that pushes the go-ahead run to scoring position. How about that? Good at-bat from Burke. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot here, Ed, to yep. think back to your time mm. with the Aces. I mean, have you ever been a part of a regular season game this late in the year that meant so much for a playoff spot? That is a very, very good question. I'll probably say no and then go home and go, oh, there was that one. <laughs> yeah. I think there, I do think there was one similar, but not around this because it was a rain out and it's a different game that wasn't part of a series. Yeah. Right? So it, it's kind of a standalone situation. So it makes it a little more intense. Khalil at second, Burke at first for Robbie Glendinning. One for three with a single in the first. Biggest spot of the game to this point. Something we'll probably say again at some point. <laughs> Tied at two. And then he takes low. It's 1-0. and oh. oh, having a few problems here. Little little control issue. Four-pitch walk, as you mentioned, to Burr. Hit Khalil. Yeah. Now that first pitch, Glendinning is low. Yeah, missed. He's missed with six in a row. Yeah. Double play depth in the infield for GK. 1-0, Glendinning takes the strike, so he finally gets one over. Throwing a lot of pitches, too. Remember, 11 pitches to Aaron Whitefield to open yeah, the inning. Yeah, to start it. Yeah, you're right. There is some action in the GK bullpen as we speak. No action for the Aces. It looks like Evan Rutsky will get the eighth. 1-1, Robbie takes down again. That's low. Good ABs. I mean, this has... Similar vibes to that ninth inning on Sunday where Todd Van Stetzel just didn't have it. And the Aces... <laughs> That's an understatement. The Aces just didn't, you know, they didn't make him, they didn't give him any strikes, you know. They made him continue to come to the plate and four walks to win it 
in the bottom of the ninth in walk-off fashion. 2-1, Ooh. swing and a, I think a foul tip into the glove. It he, was. He chased a high one there too, Mike. That was, that, that was a ball. Well, it's raining right now, and I didn't realize it was until oh. I saw the monitor. You know, it's tough to tell with this window I'm closed just looking at the you. lights. Yeah, you're right. That you're probably feels good out there, though. That's just a little, little sprinkle. Yeah, it's as fan, hot as it's fans been Fans aren't really going anywhere. A few yeah. umbrellas I see. 2-2, two, two, almost clipped mm. him. Well, this is a great crowd for a Tuesday night game on short notice. Correct. You know, it's, it's one that you can't plan all season for it to be here tonight. You know, this was one where it was only decided a couple weeks ago that this was, yeah. this game was going to be played. A really Ooh. two pitch here, big, big pitch. First and second for the Aces. 3-2 to Robbie. Chops oh. one foul. Ooh, hot shot. Look out. About three Geelong Korea players hit the dirt in the dugout. Of <laughs> Jeez, that was scary. Well, this gets really interesting if Glendinning finds a way on and the bases are loaded with one out for Skull. We saw some of the rain there against the big lights, big new lights here at the ballpark, by the way. If you haven't been out here, get here next year because it's done an unbelievable job with this place. Oh, laboring through the seventh. Glendinning's ready. Here's the 3-2, another chopper oh. foul. Well, you talked about getting here next year, Ed. I mean, it's a great time to jump in on the early bird pricing for 2023-2024 Aces season ticket membership. Save an average of $65 per membership when you sign up with the early bird pricing. So now's the time to lock it in, you know, if you're a member already and you want to renew, or if you, you're not a member and you want to become a member. You know, now's the time to do it. Get it early, you know, get it over with, and we'll see you next year. Another payoff to Glendinning. Wow. And another it's one. the third straight one that's gone into the Geelong Korea dugout. Wow. They're going to they think he's got a vendetta against him. Well, between Whitefield seeing 11 pitches, <laughs> Khalil getting hit deep in the count, Burke walking on four, and now Glendinning's deep in this at-bat. I mean, oh, he's throwing a ton of pitches, and he <laughs> still only has one out. <laughs> the dugout now, there's hardly anyone in it. They're putting the shift on. <laughs> well, yeah, you got a shift. The dugout shift. <laughs> <laughs> Left on right for Robbie, the three two again. That's down ball four. Wow, that's a that is a great eye from Glendinning. That's an incredible eye. And the last three batters have reached on free passes. Hit by pitch, walk, walk. And that's an amazing at bat, just like that one I mentioned or referenced. I think it was Sunday. He's done it again. Now we got the bases loaded. And Skull really is due, Mike. 0 oh, for 3 tonight with 3 strikeouts. 100%. Absolutely do. Left on left, not an ideal matchup. He's 0 for 3 with 3 strikeouts. It is his birthday, though, so this would be the big time to come up big. A hit here, and he's getting an extra slice of birthday cake later tonight, I'll tell you that. Maybe a little ice cream on top, too. I was going to say, maybe the present is a walk. <laughs> <laughs> See what he can do. He was the man at the plate with the bases loaded and two outs in the bottom of the ninth, and he forced in the winning run with the walk-off walk. Oh, well, there's ball one. I mean, this is eerily similar to the ninth inning on Sunday. Instead of walk, 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 mm. it's hit by pitch, walk, walk. And the only the only difference is O's not wearing that later hose and look that Van Steensel was wearing. <laughs> he, had, uh, he had short shorts on, <laughs> essentially. Like a softball player. <laughs> O slowed down his pace. 1-0. Skull flicks it out of play. Foul. Well, O really hasn't gotten in a rhythm. You know, he hasn't. I can't remember if he's thrown multiple strikes mm. in a row in this in this inning. Yeah, it's a great point. Rhythm has not been the word to use. He's really battled. Well, other than the foul balls, but multiple you know called strikes, yeah. taken strikes, swings and misses. Game tied at two. Three on for the Aces, though. 1-1. One, one. That's outside. Another good eye there from Skull. And we, we mentioned this, too. The Aces being very patient. Something was lacking uh, early in the season, if you will. Certainly been patient in, the, in the, this uh, past series and tonight. Corners pinched in for Geelong Korea. Double play depth up the middle. One out, here's the 2-1 to Skull. Another foul ball, it's 2-2. Two and two. Fouled off in that exact same area. Hey, bounced back, and a fan made a grab and flicks it to a kid. 
Love way, that. Way to go. Really nice stuff. Well, you just feel the intensity in the ballpark. I mean, there's drama here. Late inning. Oh. Tied at two, bottom seven. One out. Bases loaded. 32 pitches in the inning for Rowe. He still has just one out. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Skull. Ground ball up the middle of base hit. Here comes Khalil. Here comes Burke. Two-run single for Jake Skull, and the Aces double the lead. It's 4-2. to two. A two-run single for the birthday boy, Jake Skull. All of a sudden, the Aces are on top, and this thing changed in a hurry. He said he was due, and he delivered, and that's what a professional baseball player does, Mike. 0 for 3, has not looked comfortable at the plate, steps up, drills that, brings in two runs. Aces have a two-run lead in the bottom of seven, and still only one out. Khalil scores, Burke scores, Glenn Didding to third, and Skoll picked up second on the throw. Well, that's it for O, who just did not have it tonight. Take a quick break here on this punt one, two, three pitching change. When we come back, we'll recap what just happened. Don't go anywhere. Big, big spot in the game for the Aces. They, they look to extend the lead that they just grabbed. But keep it locked on Aces TV. When enjoying a punt, easy does it with punt one, two, three. Punt123.bet is your home for all your punting needs with same race multis and same game multi options, including daily promotions on all the major sporting and racing events. It's punting made easy. Get in the game with Punt123. Visit Punt123.bet or download the app today. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue for you, call 1-800-858-858. Create the perfect look for your home with Ublines once a year stock take sale. For two weeks only, all Ublines products are half price. Yes, half price. Ublines Australia, more value for you. Head to ublines.com.au. We've got another punt, one, two, three, pitching change here at Melbourne Ballpark. I'll tell you a little bit about the new pitcher in a minute, but first let's recap what just happened. Jake Skoll, a go-ahead two-run single up the middle. He got to second on the throw. Glenn didn't got to third. Khalil and Burke scored on the play. Still just one out. The Aces looking to extend this lead in a must-win game. Yeah, it'd be nice to pile on a couple more right here, Mike. Let's not leave it at 4-2. Let's get a couple more across. You look at Daryl George from the Geelong Korea dugout angle. Great camera shot there from our crew. The Aces, or excuse me, Geelong Korea makes the decision to intentionally walk Daryl to load the bases and set up the force anywhere. And that brings up J.D. Osborne, who pinch ran for Ryan LaVarnway in the sixth. And he's coming off a big day. Big weekend. Probably makes sense if you're Geelong Korea to put Daryl on, get that force set up. And he's also a very dangerous clutch hitter, Daryl George. New pitcher for Geelong Korea is Oyun Sung, right hander with a 429 ERA. Aces could break this thing open with one swing. The first pitch to Osborne, that's down. Well, Osborne walk to lead off the bottom of the ninth inning on Sunday and that set up the walk-off win for the Aces. Jacob Robson pinch ran for JD and scored the winning run. JD doubled, singled twice and walked in four plate appearances on Sunday. So he's hot with the bat. 1-0, there's a strike. Just caught the outside corner there. Strike zone's been a little tight tonight. Stuart Howe behind home plate. No complaints, just been a pretty tight strike zone, but that one hit the outside corner. So Oh Se Hun goes just a third of an inning. Here's Oh Yoon Sung, the new man on the mound. 1-1, one, one, JD swings over it. Mm. Fooled him on that one. So a two-run single for Jake Skull, the difference right now. The Aces trailed 2 to nothing after the top of the first. They got one back in the bottom of the second. Jared Dale, the solo homer. 
Daryl George, an aggressive base running play to score on a fielder's choice in the sixth to tie it. And now in the bottom of the seventh, Skoll with a two-run bingo up the middle. Make it two and two. Good take from Osborne there. And of course, with only one out, Jared Dale. Dangerous hitter on deck for the Aces. Glenn Dinning at third, Skoll at second, George at first. Nine hits in the game for the Aces. Two strike pitch sent in the air, deep center field. This should get an insurance run in. Lee gets behind it, makes the grab. Glenn Dinning tags, the throw is cut off. Glenn Dinning scores an insurance run and the Aces lead it five to two here in the seventh. Not sure if they wanted to cut that off. I don't think the throw would have resulted in an out, but. Well, they tried to mm. nab the runner at yeah. second. That's Skoll. They tried to get him and tag him before the run scored, but Skoll got back. I mean, medium depth out there in, in center, and I said off the bat, you know, it should be deep enough because Glendinning runs well. Yep. You know, it would have taken a perfect throw. So two gone, runners at first and second. A productive plate appearance for Osborne who gets a run home. Here's Jared Dale. Well, Evan Rutsky, the pitcher of record right now. He got the final out of the seventh after John Kennedy got five outs over the sixth and seventh combined. Dale fastball over. It's mm. one and one. For Osborne, it's his 14th RBI of the season. And the two that Skoll drove in, RBI's number five and six for him. Still traffic on the bases. Two on with two down. Five two aces lead as Dale scorches one down the left field line, but that hook's foul. Heads into the bullpen. Yeah, you look at this inning, the guys that delivered. A guy who was 0 for 3 and it struck out three times and a pinch hitter. Just the kind of stuff you need, right? You get the, the you know, the guys stepping up, the, the, the important, you know, not necessarily the heavy hitters, the guys that kind of make it happen when their time comes. And that's what they did tonight, Osborne and Skull. Ball and two strikes, Dale chases, but the ball gets away from the catcher, Cho. Here's the throw down to first, it's in time to get him. So the inning ends on a strikeout and a two to three put out. But an extremely productive inning for the Aces. They send eight to the plate, they score twice. They do it on just one hit, but take advantage of two walks and a hit by pitch. Three walks and a hit by pitch. Jake Skoll, a two run single up the middle. That's the difference right now. J.D. Osborne adds a sack fly. Five to two aces after seven full. Well, Ed, we appreciate you taking some time again here in the booth and right. you picked some exciting innings to come on. <laughs> got very lucky, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Mike. Josh in right after this. Absolutely. We'll take a break here on Aces TV. Keep it locked right here. At the Sporting Vibe, we're a little different to other pubs and bars. We have more than just cooks, we have chefs. We have more than bar service, we have table service. We have more than specials, we have specialty. We have more than live sporting events, we have atmosphere. And we have more than customers, we have fans. It's more than a sports bar, it's a sporting globe. meals from light and easy's new spring menu and enjoy amazing food more free time and a healthier life no shopping or cooking and no contracts or subscriptions just your choice of affordable delicious meals delivered to your door order today create the perfect look for your home with new blinds once a year stock take sale for two weeks only all new blinds products are half price yes half price new blinds australia more value for you head to youblinds.com.au
a massive inning for the Aces. Three runs come across, thanks in part to Jake Skull and J.D. Osborne, the two men to drive in the necessary three runs for the Aces. And now Evan Rutsky's back out in the, seven, in the eighth with a nice cushion. 5-2 the lead for Melbourne. And man, has it been a roller coaster of emotions. Two runs in the first for Geelong, and the Aces have now scored five unanswered, four of which have come in the last two innings. I mean, this is playoff baseball, Mike. It really is. I mean, we talked to, we've talked about it all season, the resilience of this team. It's pretty fun to watch right now. And not only the team resilience, but individually. You look at Jake Skull, three strikeouts in his first three plate appearances of the night. Just didn't look that comfortable at the plate. Comes back, unties the game with a two-run single in the late in the late innings. That's huge. Now Park Juhong leading off the eighth. 0-1 count to him. A lefty-on-lefty lefty matchup for Rutsky, who gets a called strike two with a fastball on the outside corner. Rutsky is in line for the victory now. And Park Juhong 0 for 3 on the day. Rutsky from the center of the rubber. Kicks and deals. Wave and a whiff. Strike three. Three runs in the seventh. Three strikes to start off the eighth inning. And Park Juhong is down swinging for the third time today. That's huge to come out of the inning in which the Aces score three. And Rutsky comes back and gets the leadoff, man. You need a shutdown frame here. And this is the guy on the mound that you want out. I imagine he will not come out for the ninth. My guess would be another lefty in Dan McGraw, but you got to get through this eighth first. Song Chan Oi, Oh Jong Han, the next two up for Geelong, and both of them have hurt the Aces this season. Swing and a miss. Rutsky is on the money. Four strikes on four pitches. Song Chan Oi hit three home runs in the three games at the start of this round one. He's one for three today with an RBI, but down 0-2 here. Rutsky looking for another three-pitch K, and Song Chan Oi slowly gets himself set in the batting box. The 0-2 coming from Rutsky, kicking the pitch. First ball of the inning as the breaking ball gets in to make it one and two. And I think the coolest thing about this run the Aces are on right now is that we're legitimately talking about playoff baseball for a team that really had to grind its way through the first few rounds of this season. Things were not going their way, and they have really flipped the script on their season. A one-two count now. Rutsky looking to continue the change for the Aces as it's two and two now. And, I mean, it's just not something that we would have expected from this team at the beginning of the season after two really solid opening rounds here at Melbourne Ballpark. But the winds can change quickly in baseball, and the Aces looking to keep it in their favor here at this late stage of the season. 2-2. Song checks his swing. An appeal to first base. He didn't go. I thought that pitch was, was there, but... Take a look at the replay here. I mean, this is another really good pitch by Rutsky to make it close. And, I mean, yeah, that's close, but probably off the plate inside. It's at the knees, but it's not over the plate. I mean, that's a knee buckler. Just no swing and you know, just a little off. Payoff pitch. Weekly hit over to first base. George fields it, tags the bag for out number two. Song Chuan Oi might need a different bat if he comes to the plate again. As it certainly sounds like that one got broken. But either way, two outs for Oh Jung Han. Yeah, I think that bat's toast. But Rusky going up and in with the fastball jammed him. I mean, that's a great pitch there after a knee buckle and breaking ball. You you, you get him behind on the fastball you know, on the next pitch. I mean, this is the spot you want a veteran like Rutsky in, and he's doing his job. 
He's been the shutdown late inning guy for the Aces all year long. And he's got another lefty to work with. Oh, Jong Han, who's 0 for 3. A strikeout and a double play grounded into. First pitch to him. Misses for a called ball one. Oh, Jong Han was especially lethal when the Aces came to visit Geelong. Back in round six. In that comeback walk-off victory that they had. Oh, Jung Han tied up the game with a pinch hit single in the ninth inning. 1 0. Called strike on the outside corner. Two fastballs right in the same part of the zone there. He's painting right there. I mean, that's that's an yeah. unhittable pitch. It's a, it's a strike, but it's an unhittable pitch on that outside. Went rolling stones and painted it black. 1 1 count to the lefty O. Rutsky deals. Breaking ball, another pitch, painting the outside corner. And Oh Jung Han down to his final strike. Well, I'm hoping he can paint it red. You know, I marked my strikeouts in red pen, so I'm looking to put another K down. Hey, if I can make a song reference, I'm going to do it. A 1 2 count. Fans clapping to Egg Rusty on. Called strike three. Two Ks in the eighth for Evan Rutsky. And he sends Geelong down in order to help preserve a three run seventh. Two strikeouts for Rusky. Aces heading into what they hope is their last at bats of the regular season at home. 5 2 Melbourne heading to the bottom of the eighth. for the moments with the people you love the most. To share the highs and the lows together. It's the one for all people, all times and all places. Brick Lane's One Love Pale Ale. It's the one for all. Dan McGraw getting loose for the Aces. Five straight games when he's come in. They have earned a win. He has three saves and two victories in that time. And we may see him once again in the top of the ninth inning. We will see a new pitcher and clearer skies. As we had a punt, one, two, three, call to the bullpen for Geelong. Lee Jun Hyuk will face off against eight, nine, and one. Jacob Robson. Only ace who didn't bat in the seventh. He takes a called strike. Whitefield and Khalil will follow him up. Robson on the day. 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Two ground outs right back to the pitcher. The 0-1. Robson holds up his swing. Smartly so. It's now 1-1. and Five to the score, nine hits apiece. And the pitch called a strike on the outside corner. And the count's now one and two. Robson has been moved all around the outfield and all up and down the Aces lineup, batting in the seven spot tonight. Now the one two pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. One gone here in the eighth. Lee Jin Hyuk. 
Strikes out the first batter he sees, and now it's the seventh inning due up of Aaron Whitefield and George Khalil. Whitefield, two for three, a single and a double. He was thrown out trying to turn that second inning single into a double. And he comes up in a big spot. Melvin looking for some more insurance. It'll be interesting to see, because it seems like McGraw is set to come in for the ninth. Do you think they keep him on there if it's not a save situation? You know, I think just because it's a must-win game, I I think he's going out there regardless, especially if he's getting loose right now. You don't want to have him get hot and then not use him. As the 1-0 bounces in front of the plate, 2-0. Now, with the next few days off, they, they could just go to anybody they want in this situation, but I think McGraw's getting hot. Even if it's a four-run lead or more, he's coming in because he warmed up and knowing that there's a few days off. I mean, he's the, he's your most trusted guy to close out, close out games right now. The safe situation or not, you got to get the dub. I think they go to him. 2-0 to Whitefield. Lee, the pitch. Whitefield holds up his swing, 3-0. And... He is not a man you want on base if you were Geelong. 5-2 the lead. McGraw continues to get loose in the Aces pen. And he's a he's pitched, I mean, consecutive days, short rest. I mean, any way you slice it, McGraw just continues to get on the mound and partly because he's earned that right. Absolutely. He's been so good since he came off the injured list. And to go from a starting role to back end of the bullpen, closing out games. Seamless transition. The 3-1 now to Whitefield. He lets it go. It bounces on home plate. An appeal to first, and they say he went around. So once again, a full count to Aaron Whitefield as we take another look at the check swing here. Close call, but it seems like the right one. Ian Gavin making the final decision over on first base. The payoff pitch. Whitefield will head to first base. A really close pitch on the outside corner for Lee Jin Hyuk and a one out walk to the dangerous Aaron Whitefield. Whitefield's been on base three times tonight. Single double and now a walk and you know the time he didn't reach base he worked an 11 pitch at bat. He's been a really nice addition to the bottom of the order, a guy who spent most of the season leading off, and now he's batting either the seven or eight hole. It just lengthens the lineup, and and in terms of trying to grab an insurance run, see if he tries to swipe second, maybe even third. In lower leverage, I'd imagine he tries to steal at least once, 11 for 11 on this season. That leads the team. And George Khalil up at the plate. As this one is hit out in the air, just left Ojung Han. Easy play, easy catch for the second out of the inning. See, now with two outs, I'm, I'm interested to see if he'll go because he gets thrown out. Um, you know, it's not a huge deal with a three-run lead, but if he makes it, he's in scoring position with two outs instead of on first with two outs. Now, on the other hand, he could probably score on anything down the line or in the gap with two outs because he'll be running on contact with two down. And Chris Burke, certainly a guy capable of doing that. Infield shifted towards the middle for him. A double play depth, essentially, even though there are two outs. Whitefield's inching towards second, but Burke takes a first pitch fastball in there for a called strike. Burke, one for three today, but he's reached base twice, including scoring on that Jake Skoll single back in the seventh after he walked. Throw over to first, almost out of the glove of Song Chan Oi. Really nice to keep that in his mitt. And Whitefield slides in ahead of a potential tag anyway. Burke, a seven game on base streak. Off goes Whitefield. Burke hammers this high out into right field. On the track is Park Ju Hong, and about two steps in front of the warning track, he makes the catch to end the inning. So the Aces threaten, stranding a runner. No hits yet, and it is a save situation. Dan McGraw will come out of the Aces' bullpen. 
to try and close it out and set up a winner-take-all series with Perth. Bottom of the ninth coming up, 5-2, Aces lead. For over 40 years, All Green Nursery has been providing the communities of Melbourne's western and northern suburbs the best advice and results for their gardens. Our retail centre, indoor plant space and expansive nursery floor showcases over 150 varieties of vibrant plants, most of them grown locally right here in Werribee South. We have qualified horticulturists on site to help assist with all your gardening needs and our home decor section is stocked with a full range of quality options. All Green Nursery, your local plant nursery and garden centre. Visit our sites in Hoppers Crossing and Epping. All-Star Access Hire are your access equipment specialists. We have an extensive range of state-of-the-art equipment and we pride ourselves on delivering outstanding customer service. We have the youngest fleet of equipment in Victoria and we are consistently adding new machines. We get to know our customers and form partnerships with them. This video is of our partnership with the Victorian Government at Reservoir Station. All-Star Access Hire are proud sponsors of the Melbourne Aces and our All-Star Bar. It all comes down to this for the Aces. A three-run lead and the most reliable arm on the mound to do it. Zan McGraw is back for the Aces. The last five games he has pitched in, the Aces have won. Two wins and three saves and one unearned run allowed. That only run came in the top of the 10th inning against Adelaide. An inherited runner scored on a ground rule double from Quincy Lattimore. That is it. And the Aces starting the ninth with a blank slate for Geelong. Who look like they have a pinch hitter coming up. And they do. So a lefty against the lefty McGraw. First pitch of the ninth. Misses. And Kim Q Sung is the pinch hitter. Next pitch in there for a called strike to Kim. Jin Young's night is done. He was one for three with a single and a strikeout. Interesting move to go with a lefty against the lefty McGraw. Breaking ball, that's a curve in there for a called strike two. 22nd game of the season for Kim. Three homers, 13 RBIs, and now the one-two. Hit in the air, out to right. Khalil under it, one out. A little pop-up, an easy play for Khalil, and that's what the Aces need. Two outs away. The Aces cannot lose a game for the rest of the season if they want to make the playoffs. They need this win today, and they need four straight in Perth. And they are two outs away from setting that up. Kim Ju Song hits this one out to left field. Going back is Burke on the track. He leaps, and it's off the wall. Kim will stand up at second base with a double. Whitefield challenges him with the throw. And McGraw allows just his second base hit since becoming the Aces' closer. And it's just a well-hit ball. Burke was tracking really well and a really good angle to see how close this was. Just over his glove, a little bit under Ram. But it's just a double as we have a pinch runner on second base now. Or no, we don't. That's just the man taken off the guards. My apologies. So it's still Kim Ju-sung on second. 
Osborne relaying the signs and a pinch hitter coming up for Geelong. It is Kim Tae-hyun who is listed as a pitcher. This is someone else entirely. Yeah, Kim Tae-hyun, who is listed as a pitcher on the roster, is coming in as a pinch hitter. one -oh. That is hit high in the air, foul down the left field line. That looks like Kim Ki-yoon, their catcher, wearing a different jersey. It's a 1-1 one -one count, runner on second base. One out. And McGraw will look at second base. He deals. Slice to first. Fielded in fair territory. George flips back to first for the out. McGraw covering. And Kim Ju-sung moves into third base. The Aces, one out away. And now Kim Tae-yang. Kim Tae-yang represents the potential final out. A runner on third. Two outs, the Aces with a 5-2 lead. 19 total hits in this game, 10 of them coming from Geelong. McGraw trying to keep it that way. Three-run lead for Melbourne. McGraw deals. Fastball up and in, 1-0. McGraw, former Red Sox farmhand, has been a mainstay for this Aces team. Part of those two championship teams as the breaking ball misses away, 2-0. Been a starter and a reliever. As we take a look at some chin music here. Brushing Kim Tae-yeon at the plate. High pop up to right. Robson giving chase in foul territory. And that will do it. Jacob Robson seals the victory for the Aces. And Melbourne stays alive this season. Four straight wins for the Aces, and a winner-take-all series in Perth is coming up. Melbourne needs all four wins to get into the playoff, but it is still a possibility. 5-2, the win for Melbourne, and their season-best win streak continues to grow. McGraw gets his fourth save of the season and all of them have come within the last two weeks. He had two in Sydney, he had two wins and a save in Adelaide and now he gets the save to secure the round one victory in Melbourne. Yeah, you heard that right. This was a makeup game for round one that was washed out due to rain that is now a victory for the Aces. 5-2 to two the score. Jake Skoll delivering on his birthday, becoming the hero at the plate for the Aces. He had a two-RBI single in the seventh inning to secure the victory for Melvin. That made it 4-2. Another run added in that seventh by Jacob, by J.D. Osborne. And that was all the Aces needed. They shut down Geelong, allowing just one hit in the final two frames. That double in the ninth inning by Kim Ju Sung. And we're going to go down now to Mike Marcantanini, who is going to talk to Ryan LaVarnway. What's up, Aces fans? Michael Marcantanini down here on the field with Aces catcher Ryan LaVarnway. Well, Ryan, big win for the club. Needed a win tonight to keep the season alive. How's it feel to get that win tonight? The boys have been playing good baseball. Uh, that was a good team. That was the first time that I had had the chance to see them. So it was it was a good game, and uh, I'm glad the boys could pull it out. Down 2 nothing after the top of the first. This team continues to fight its way back. Jared Dale, a big home run in the second. 
Daryl George, an aggressive base running play to tie the game in the sixth. And then Jake Skull puts you guys ahead in the bottom of the seventh. What can you say about what your teammates did to claw their way back tonight? Yeah, the way the wind was blowing, we, we had no panic. They That home run early on the top of the first, you know, was a cheapy one. We knew we were going to be able to score runs tonight, and I think we're confident in our abilities, and hopefully we can take that all the way to Perth. You came out of the game in the later innings, but you were back there behind the plate for most of the game. What did you see from the guys that you caught today, especially Scott Harkin giving you guys five strong innings? Yeah, we were able to make adjustments after those first couple of hitters got on and came around to score. Uh, he was throwing his fastball and a curveball combo today, a couple sliders mixed in there. Uh, didn't throw the, the splits and the changeups he did his last outing, but he, he really harnessed those two pitches mainly. You haven't been here that long. You joined the team prior to round seven against Canberra, only a few weeks here in Melbourne. But how much fun are you having here with this team? I love it here, man. I would I would love to just spend a ton of time here, and uh, I've been really making the most out of it, uh, seeing the city, tasting the coffee and the food, and uh, seeing the sights. And a great group of boys in there in that locker room. And uh, like I said, hopefully we can finish where we started. Four straight wins. Four more wins would mean a playoff spot for this Aces team. What's the vibe in the clubhouse, and what's the what's the feel right now with, with the guys? Uh, everyone's feeling good. Uh, the, the thing is we got to keep it rolling. We need four, but we need one at a time. We need one at a time four times in a row. So we're going to focus on game one and, and see what we can do from there. All right, well, Ryan, go enjoy this one with the boys. Thanks for your time, and go Aces. All right, go Aces. All right, Josh, back up to you in the booth. Thanks, Mike, and thank you, Ryan, for joining us on the Aces Post Game Show. They take the last four games of their regular season here at home, but an even bigger four coming up against Perth. And we're going to take you through how this was won and how the Aces season has stayed alive. It didn't start off on the best foot, though, for the Aces. The second pitch of the ball game left the yard. So Ho Chal, his second home run of the season, made it one nothing Geelong really quick and the second game in a row that a first inning solo home run was allowed to the lead off batter. Quan Quang Min reached first with a single ended up scoring on an RBI ground out from Song Chan Oi that was two nothing until this Jared Dale continued his hit streak seven games straight with a base hit for Dale and that was a pretty big way to continue it. A solo shot, his second of the year, first since round two against Perth, made it 2-1 aces. But that's the way the score would stay for quite a while. Scott Harkin settled down, had five strikeouts after that first inning as the aces kept it 2-1. And the defense really shined for Melbourne. Three double plays turned in this ball game. And Daryl George was big. This, though, was the biggest play of the day. A missed throw over at second allowed George to come all the way around from second base on what looked to be a routine double play. The catcher couldn't handle it, and the Aces tied it. And then the birthday boy, Jake Skull, pokes one up the middle. This scores two. Even a good throw here doesn't get Chris Burke, and Skull smartly advancing to second base on the play. Aces lead it 4-2, a lead they would not surrender and they added a little bit more insurance in the late innings. Well, a couple batters later, it was J.D. Osborne. He came on for LaVarnway as a pinch runner and proved to be a very welcome addition to the Aces lineup. A high fly ball out to center. Khalil was running on contact, or was Glendinning, excuse me, running on contact, and he got into home plate easily as the throw went to second base to keep Skull there. It was 5-2 Aces, and then the bullpen did the rest. Dan McGraw lights out since returning to the bullpen and Jacob Robson making a really nice route to this ball to secure the Aces fourth straight victory I think that's a ball he's going to want to keep we got Mike Marcantonini back in that broadcast booth I mean you were right there in the thick of it with the players at the end of that game you got to imagine they're feeling pretty good after that that was a lot of fun I'm telling you the vibes down on the field were were incredible um, this is the most fun I've had all season. I'm sure it's the same for you. I mean, this yep. this is playoff baseball in the regular season. This is so much fun. Uh, it was really cool to get Ryan LaVarne away for an interview. Uh, such a personable guy and a guy who's meant so much to this team over the last couple series. Uh, yeah, the vibes are great right now. Um, yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun down the field. Well, hopefully we'll have more baseball for you. As the Aces, as we mentioned, need four straight wins in Perth to get a playoff berth. They cannot win the division. Perth still can, 
but the Aces can play spoiler and get themselves in line for the playoffs to try and defend their title and make it a third straight championship here in Melbourne. But a lot of work to do there. Talked about it with Ed and, you know, how awesome at the time we said how awesome would it be if that flight to Perth, uh, you know, meant that much more. You know, they got to go to Perth either way, but knowing their playoff hopes are still alive, flying five hours across Australia uh, is definitely going to be a lot sweeter. And, yeah, I mean, just knowing that they can control their destiny, four wins, in the playoffs, you know, like Ryan Lavarnway said on the postgame show, they got to do it uh, four wins, one one game at a time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, an eight game winning streak to end the season that's a tall task. It's tough to do. There's no margin for error. But the way this team's playing, they can beat anybody, and they know they can beat anybody. There was a sweep in the first series. It was Canberra over Sydney in the first four games of the season. So it wouldn't be the only sweep of the year. That's got to be promising for Melbourne. But either way. You, whether or not they win four in Perth, you got to love the resiliency of their of the team to keep the season alive and keep the home crowd happy, finishing off the regular season slate with four straight wins here in Melbourne Ballpark. Yep. Playing big games late in the season, playing games that mean something, that's awesome. I mean, it's awesome for us in the broadcast booth. Yeah. It's awesome for the team on the field. It's awesome for the fans and in the rest of uh, this Aces organization. So it, it's really cool um, to see what's happening. You know, there's something going on right now. You can feel it. Well, hopefully that will continue in Perth. Four straight wins for the Aces. That is what they need. They'll need a win on Friday, two on Saturday, and another win on Sunday if they want to be in the playoffs to defend their back-to-back ABL titles. Hopefully this isn't the last game we'll give to you. We won't be in Perth, but we are hoping to be back in playoffs. Until that time, though, we do want to give a big, big thanks to Andrew McLeish and the Sportscast Australia crew because they have been outstanding for us absolutely i mean they 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 make us look and sound good on air um really really appreciate everything that they've done um you know the hard work that they put in before and after games and during games so yeah hats off to them and you know all, always appreciative and, and very thankful and a couple other players you want to shout out it's been pretty much andrew brendan jones keely edwards kaz murray who have been here for pretty much the entire season and we definitely could not have sounded this good without them. So we want to give a big shout-out to the plethora of camera people that have come on, especially those that core group over at Sportscast Australia. It has been fantastic working with these guys all year. Not that we're biased, but we like to think it's the best broadcast in the ABL. Absolutely. I like to think so as well. I think, we, uh, I think we've earned that title, uh, even if it is <laughs> self-proclaimed. But... Um, uh, yeah, I just want to give a quick shout-out to all my family and friends back home who have tuned in all season, my mom, dad, my brother, Jack, my Uncle David, my Aunt Archie, and my cousin, Alina, especially. Uh, thanks so much for the support, everyone back home. And uh, my mom got up at 3 a.m. To, to watch the broadcast today, so I appreciate everything that they do to support me, even from across the world. If my parents were awake right now, I'd shout them out too, but they're not. <laughs> Love you, though, Mom and Dad, my brother Adam as well, all of my family who supports. But who we love the most is you guys for tuning in. We would not have this broadcast if it wasn't for the support that you guys we've added almost a thousand subscribers over the course of this year and i'd like to hope that mike and i have had a part of that so for those of you who are, who are newer subscribers and older we appreciate your support for our channel for aces tv and we hope to bring some more games to you come playoff time but until that point a big thank to everyone who listened, a big thanks to our Sportscast Australia crew, and also a big thanks to the Aces front office for bringing us across the world to make this happen You guys, for you guys. Justin Huber obviously played a big role in that. Mel Orr has been with us all season. And part it, it, it is not as fun as an, of an experience. Luke Surley as well, another guy who has been working close and closely with us. It is not as fun without such a great front office, and there's no team that has a better front office than the Melbourne Aces. I agree, 100%. Yeah, you know, I second everything you just said. Retweet on all of that. Um, yeah, it's been so much fun, and uh, the, the people, the people make these jobs in baseball worth it and, and um, a lot of fun. So, yeah, shout out to everybody here with the uh, Aces organization, and of course the Aces fans that drive us to be better every game. Well, a win on Friday, a win on, a two wins on Saturday, and a win on Sunday would mean we have playoff baseball in Melbourne. We'll keep you updated on our social media accounts with the details on that. But until then, we are going to sign off for one last time in the regular season. A big thanks again to Ed Wyatt 
for, for joining us this season. It was a lot more fun with him on the broadcast as well. Not that it's not great with you, Mike. But thank you all for joining in. For Ozzy Mike, for Ed Wyatt, I'm Josh Sperber. Thank you all for tuning in all year long, and hopefully we'll see you in the playoffs.